This is A's Cast Live, your comprehensive look at the Oakland Athletics. And the pitch is swung on, hit the right field, hit deep. Whitefield going back at the track over his head and over the wall. Do you believe that? And 29 other MLB clubs. Ramirez with a drive to deep right, away back, go Go Hayes, it's a bomb out there by the Rocks. And boy, oh boy, this third inning is now showtime. It is a judgy end blast. All rise. Here comes the judge. Join us as we take you inside the baseball universe. From humidors to spin rates to game-changing moments, we have you covered. Spend your afternoon with us next from the town, only on A's Cast Live. Here's Chris Townsend. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to A's Cast Live as we're in our final day at the winter meetings here in San Diego at the Manchester Grand Hyatt. It's been an absolute wonderful two days so far. We got tons of breaking news. We got tons of signings. We're going to be here from 9 to noon, take a break, not really, because then we're going to tape our old skipper, Bob Melvin. Uh, So Billy Owens who did not bring home the number one pick, will join us, uh, A's assistant general manager here at 9.15. Zach Kreiser from Yahoo Sports at 9.30. The Duke, Jim Duquette at 10 o'clock. Martin Gallegos at 11. And Kip Golden. Golden? Golden. Golden. Uh, who, he is, he's our guy from... Uh, uh, Egypt bo- Baseball, yeah, right? Because baseball runs, he uh, him and Bobby Evans... We found out last time we hear about baseball in Egypt. It's going to be great to catch up to them and see how it's going. Giancarlo went over. Giancarlo Stanton went over there. The most popular Yankee on the team for about a whole day. No, no, no. All right, so that's going to be in the first segment. All right, that's 9 to noon. Then we're going to take a break. We're going to check in with our old skipper, Bob Melvin, is going to join us. You're going to see that in the second hour, 2 to 4, kind of wrapping up the winter meetings. I think we'll have Billy Bean at that time. Uh, A lot of other people are going to be stopping by. So another jam-packed day here at the winter meetings in San Diego. And let me just start by saying, I told you so. I told you, America. I told you so. You know, there may be a lot of things that you can say about me, but one is I'm not a sucker. And if you wanted me to believe that you have a guy that who starred in New York, who knows the power of the New York Yankees, you think that he's going to leave that because he wants to come home, which really isn't home. He's from the Central Valley. It's not from the Bay Area. But he grew up a Giants fan. I get it. Loves Rich Aurelia. Blah, 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 blah. I told you right here on this program that the San Francisco Giants were absolutely foolish to let out that they were gonna not going to let anybody outbid them. The fact that they let that out of their house was foolish because the only thing that could happen, well, there was two things. They actually come through or they got Major Egg on their face. And what do they have again? Major egg on their face. Oh, you want to be a a player for Bryce Harper? You didn't get him. Giancarlo Stanton, I knew him as Mike, was leaving the Marlins. And they were going to trade him. Giants were in on that. Didn't get him. Giants haven't landed a big name. And no, Mitch Hanniger does not count. And congratulations to Mitch Hanniger. From the Bay Area, from the South Bay, good kid. A three-year deal. What was it, 42, 43 million around in there? Uh, I think I have it. Let me pull it up. It's, it's somewhere in there. But they did get a Bay Area kid. It's not the right, you know, but Northern California kid. Not the right. 43 and a half. Yeah, so good for Mitch Hanniger. But, you know, that 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 that, that was that's your big swagger, San Francisco? I mean, it, 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 if we were a real media market, okay? And I'm fired up. I I haven't even, I'm just drinking my first Celsius the day I'm already fired up. We went six and a half hours live yesterday. If we were any type of real sports media market, the fan base today would step up and say, 
Where are you at, KMBR? Where are you at, NBC Sports Bay Area? You were all fooled. You were all duped. You all waited around for what? John Heyman to send out a bogus tweet? And then your media, San Francisco Giant fans, your media all turned around and said, oh, my sources, go look at their timelines. They all had sources, said Judge was going to be a Giant. Judge was picking the Giants. That's what all your sources had. And now we're reading today, what? The Giants, Giants weren't even a player. It was the San Diego Padres. Where, where were these Giants sources saying that the reason why Aaron, Aaron Judge came to San Diego to not meet with Larry Bear, who I saw here, not to meet with Farhan, he traveled all the way from Florida. Remember, Judge was at Monday Night Football, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, gets on a private plane, flies all the way here to San Diego, not to meet with the Yankees, not to meet with the Giants, who said they would not be outbid. He flew here to meet with the San Diego Padres. Where are you at, Giant fans? Where are you holding your organization? Where are you holding this media that was here? They fired up the cameras. They are all excited. We got the Yankees to our right. The Yankees were going to lose out on their star player because the Giants were going to win the sweepstakes. And what did you get? Nothing. You got Mitch Hanniger. Are you going to hold their, their feet to the fire today? All, the, all this time, they talk such a big game of what they're going to do, and they don't land anybody. No offense, Mitch Hanniger. Oh, now, now, and now they're going to pivot. Their sources say they're going to pivot. Well, your sources didn't even mention that he was here to meet with the Padres. And what's going on with the Padres? Can someone explain how this is possible? How they offered $342 million to Trey Turner. Now they've offered $400 million to Aaron Judge. They got $342 in Fernando Tatis. They got $300 million in Manny Machado. And they still got to deal with Juan Soto. Yeah, and you're paying, you're paying uh, um, Jose Suarez $46 million. Uh, you're paying a lot of, you're paying some other guys and you, you got, you got you Darvish under contract. You're paying Hosmer 43 million to pay in Boston. The Padres, <laughs> yeah. the Padres are writing a check for 43 million to Boston for Hosmer to play there. So, I mean, explain to me a couple things, explain to me where the Padres got all this money and, but, and, and, and this will be a good question is if they offer judge all this money and they offered Trey Turner, all this money, does this mean they're not in on keeping Juan Soto long term? Because wouldn't you think there, there's only so many 300 plus million dollar contracts you can give out. You just traded for Juan Soto, who everybody tried to tell me was the greatest player of all time. And all he did was come to San Diego and stink it up. Does this mean that, 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 that their prize acquisition, they're not going to sign? Because there's no way you're going to have Tatis, have Machado, sign Turner or Judge and sign Juan Soto. I mean, now you're talking about having the highest payroll, the Padres of all time in baseball, and it wouldn't even be close. You'd blow past what the Mets were. I just, I, I, I it's crazy. But there's, there, there's some things, I mean, Yankees went out, they got their guy. I mean, you really thought Aaron Judge was going to leave Broadway? He was going to leave New York? Guy has a chance to have a monument next to Babe Ruth? Lou Gehrig? Mantle, DiMaggio, Jeter, Reggie. You're going to leave that? Never bought it for a minute. Dave Stewart yesterday, Oakland A's Hall of Famer. I mean, Stu's done everything in this game. He's about to be an owner. Stu was like, he's not leaving New York. The Yankees got their guy. Now, just because they got their guy, they had to, they had to bring him back. They had to bring him back. And he wasn't going to leave. They'll now give him the C. Now he'll be a Yankee for life. I mean, it is what, what it was going to be. But my big question is, where are John, they all sat around. I guarantee you, I know for a fact, they all sat around NBC Sports Bay Area. They're all sitting at their computers, right? You got all the beat writers sitting here. And John Heyman puts out Arson Judge yeah. is likely to sign with the Giants. And they all ran with it. Did you notice that all the people here covering the Giants, that once this bogus Heyman tweet went out, they now were all hearing from their sources the same thing? Do you notice that? 
Yeah. I, what, what does that tell you? That they're all hearing from the same person. They have no sources. Yeah. What, what's your guys' sources? You guys wait. Why, why didn't you have, if you guys had, if you guys had this, I mean, you had, you, you got these people who work in the Bay Area, in the media, who were sent down here to cover this. They were sent down to cover Judge to the Giants. Right? That was their job. This yeah. was their main focus. They sent everybody down. They sent camera people, producers. Everything down here was to cover Aaron Judge to the Giants. Wait, wait. Their sources? Where yeah. were their sources before Heyman's bogus tweet? I don't remember. In the, was there any of their sources? Not that I saw. Any. It was after Heyman's bogus tweet. And you know what? Everybody gives Heyman a bad time. When you're a news, when you're someone breaking stories, get some right, you get some wrong. Jump the gun sometimes. But the fact that Heyman gave them what they wanted to hear. Heyman gave them what they wanted to hear. They heard Judge. They heard, they heard Giants from somebody in the national media. And I guarantee you, everybody on the floor at NBC Sports Bay Area started going nuts. And next, you know, the beat writers here started going nuts. And then also, well, we're hearing too. Well, if you were hearing correctly, your real sources, if they were real source, if there was actually real sources, they would have told everybody, slow down. A.J. Preller and the Padres, they're coming up with another big offer. A big enough offer that caused Aaron Judge to fly here to San Diego. He's here. I wonder, the Yes Network is right next to us to the right. I wonder if Judge will come over today, if he'll walk his six, seven, six, eight, whatever he is, by us. He's one of the largest human beings you've ever seen. Um, I mean, of course he wasn't leaving the Yankees. What a joke. Also a joke. How is it possible we got the sixth pick in the draft? Yeah. How we, is this possible? The first time ever we did we did our version. What what was this the David Stern, Patrick Ewing? What year was that? 85, 80, 86? 80, was it 84? Not 84. It might have been 80. You know, I think it might have been 1985. Yeah, it's like 85, 86. Ewing was drafted by the New York Knickerbockers in 1985. 1985. The New York Knicks, whoever was doing the picking back then, the New York Knicks are looking at the, remember those big envelopes they used to have? And the rumor was that the envelope was frozen. The, the Knicks was frozen because they wanted Patrick Ewing, the biggest star coming out of Georgetown. No, Georgetown coach, ironically. They wanted him to be a New York Knick because obviously the NBA is better if the Knicks are good. So they pull it out. Oh, frozen envelope. Uh, he's a Knick. Well, Billy Owens, who, by the way, just walked by. I don't know where the heck Billy O went. I think, I think he went outside. I saw him walk by, and I think he went outside. Oh, he's out there in a conversation already. So Billy Owens, assistant general manager for the Oakland Athletics, is, is supposed to join us right now. He's right, before, he's right out here out on the beautiful terrace here in San Diego talking shop with somebody. Um, he got us number six. But maybe it'll be a blessing that number six will be a Hall of Fame player. I did do some. I did. A, I did a little early research on the uh, mock draft that Baseball America put out, and the number one pick is obviously it's Dylan Cruz from LSU. But I went through and looked, and I didn't see a catcher in the top thirty. So I think we might be able to pivot off that idea of a catcher. But who knows? But yeah, six pick. I, I think the last time we had the six pick, I got to look. I was. I meant to look it up, but I. I didn't do the research before we got got on. But I will find out who our, the last time we picked six was. Ladies and gentlemen, you saw him last night in a suit. First ever. Turn, turn around the other way. And then and pull, pull it down. Pull, pull this down right here. There you go. There you go. There you go. Perfect. And how <coughs> shocked were you at number six? Yeah, just the way everything kind of broke down. It was like... Um, once the twins came out from 14, then they announced that they were one through six. You knew from uh, one, two, or three, somebody was going to get pushed down. And then they had like a little inner recess after seven. 
and I was just hoping that um, our, our name wasn't called. I uh, had a big smile on my face, and and sure enough, after I heard that first syllable, uh, I got deflated. I mean, I, I was downstairs in the lobby afterwards. I, I think I had the, the Jordan crying meme or Jordan crying meme after uh, falling to six. Oh, man. I mean, it's just uh, – it is what it is. I mean, it's 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 just, you know, you want to get number one. You've had a bad year. You've lost 102 games and you're hoping for that pick. And it's just, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, honestly, it is what it is. I mean, I, I like that things are collectively bargained um, just the way it's been going down the last uh, decade or so. I, I like the aspect that we're all trying to win. We're all trying to be competitive. And so the result of that, if we're going to have a draft lottery, it's going to create more exposure in the game, excitement. Even though the ball didn't bounce our way, it was still, you know, there was a little bit of a buzz in the lobby. Not not, not the um, metropolitan buzz, but it was still kind of cool just to um, see the dominoes fall last night. I was hoping we were talking about, uh, you remember when we were kids, Patrick Ewing coming out of Georgetown and the the, the whole conspiracy was when, when the executive for the Knicks was able to go through all the envelopes. He searched for the frozen one, and that was the one that would pull out, say, Nick's and Patrick Young. I was hoping there would be some ping pong balls or something involved where you got to go on stage. Yeah, I definitely was hoping. I mean, no pun intended. That wasn't going to be Sam Bowie, but, I mean, <laughs> you go back to the next draft. I mean, hopefully it's that point where, you know, you got Hakeem Olajuwon. People forget Hakeem actually went one in that draft, and then um, Bowie went two. And then Michael Jordan went three, and it was a star-studded draft. Think uh, uh, Sir Charles, Charles Barkley's in that draft. And if you go through the list, there's like a bunch of Hall of Famers. So, you know, maybe we have that fortune this year in 2023. Six is still pretty high. And as you mentioned, you know, <coughs> if you end up with Charles Barkley, you're pretty good, right? I mean, so there's still uh, there's still a lot of value. We, we know as you get late, even the draft is so unpredictable. If you look at the numbers long-term, like – all these years you go through to, through the draft, it's so hard to predict. But you do know in, like, in the top ten you can get a really good player. No, you're definitely going to get a good player. I mean, I think I saw recently actually that, um, you know, first overall pick for, for various reasons, but uh, Chipper Jones and um, Ken Griffey Jr., they might be one of only the two for one one overalls that went to the Hall of Fame. I mean, Hall of Fame is obviously very difficult, but that just tells you that in the top ten, you're going to have a strong opportunity. But just the way the draft goes down, it's kind of a sliding scale with the capital and what you get for an overall pool standpoint. So having a higher number is pretty valuable just from the capital aspect. You know, you know, looking at what we have coming up. I know you get excited about a lot of our players. I mean, we had Clark and Butler, who were two athletes that uh, everybody's raving about from the Arizona Fall League. Uh, Soderstrom is is an elite bat. He is a kid that, I mean, he's a prodigy. We remember his dad, Steve, who was such a terrific player at Fresno State and ended up making uh, the big leagues with the San Francisco Giants. We've been talking a lot about Geloff for years. Uh, we saw him down in you know, playing against the San Jose Giants when Stockton was in town. He was playing third base. Now he's playing second base. The bat is going to play. I mean, you start talking about these names. How how excited are you about these names that are going to be coming to Oakland? Yes, yeah, it's, it's funny because I always get – I'm the guy, I'm the eternal optimist, and I actually always – I normally get proven correct, obviously. They don't go back <laughs> on that, you know. I remember saying Matt Olson, you know, in A-ball had, had the best glove, you know, and baseball at the time at first base and people chuckled and I got killed online, but uh, I got proven correct and, and a lot of stuff. I mean, you know, afterwards, but yeah, I mean, it's, um, it's an exciting time. And we go in waves here in Oakland. I've been here 25 years. I believe we made the playoffs 11 or 12 years. We normally go through cycles. I mean, we made the playoffs, you know, 2001, two and three had a little lull, made it in six, made the playoffs again, 12, 13 and 14. Little Lowell made the playoffs again, uh, 17, 18, um, uh, 18, 19, and 20. So we normally uh, build it up, ha have a great product on the field, exciting, see, see uh, young players kind of break in, do their thing, and then later on um, we, we change it out a little bit. But, yeah, it's coming up. You got Gilloff. He, he's a stud. Soderstrom can swing that bat. I'm, I'm kind of give him a, a – 
a Carlos Delgado comp. He's, he's he can catch, but the bad is elite. Uh, Denzel Clark. Wait, wait, whoa, whoa, uh, Carlos Delgado. Yeah, no, nah, I mean Carlos Delgado actually came up as a catcher, and and Soderstrom can catch, but Carlos's bat was so elite that at yeah. some point uh, he, he took off the gear and, and it started raking and and produced. So now he can definitely catch. He's got a good arm. He's athletic, but with the bat is special. I mean, the bat it's it's line to line. He made a few adjustments the second half last year. Uh, you you saw it in Double A, finished the year in Triple A. Geloff hit five homers last year down the stretch in Triple A. Phenomenal athlete, um, unbelievable, great makeup. Uh, Walden Chuck, you, you got a glimpse of him last year at the Coliseum. Swing miss stuff. Uh, Sears, tough kid out of Citadel. I mean, the, the, the next wave is going to be here. Uh, the 2021 draft, uh, Brett Harris, kid seventh rounder out of Gonzaga. Last year, uh, between high A and double A, hit 290 with 17 home runs. Good walk to strikeout ratio. Uh, solid defender at third base. Good at second. Kind of give him a Brandon Drury comp. He's a little bit off the radar. Uh, Mason Miller was the highest rated pitching prospect in the Arizona Fall League. Um, kid came out of Gardner Webb. A juvenile type 1 diabetes, uh, got stronger later in his uh, amateur career, averaging 100 miles an hour in the Arizona Fall League with, with legitimate secondary pitches at six foot five. So now uh, the train's coming downhill. I, I believe that you know next year, 2023, the second half, you'll see the numbers really start to matriculate to the 510. And starting in 2024, we'll be competitive again and uh, we'll have another good run. You know, when you start looking at velocity, what, when was it all your time being out there scouting? I mean, no one logs more miles and more hotel rooms than you. When did you start thinking, oh, my God, all these guys are throwing 100. All these guys are throwing 98. I mean, it used to be you were like a unicorn when you did that. Now you see it on a regular basis. Yeah, and I remember, like, uh, I played in the minor leagues from 92 to 98. I faced Roberto Hernandez. He was a White Sox closer in the mid-90s, and he was an anomaly. He threw 100 miles an hour back then. But, you know, not like anything else. I mean, kids get bigger, faster, stronger. Uh, their, their training acumen's better. And, you know, the velocity's higher. Uh, the physical attributes of these guys are, are phenomenal. It's only getting better. I mean, it's like – I mean, baseball's a history game, and, and I can recite the history as well as anybody – but these kids getting bigger, faster, stronger across all sports, um, just like the, the television in your your front room, you don't have the same TV that you had 20 years ago. The TV's better now. So, I mean, things are just – it's just technology, man. I mean, these guys 20 years from now, they're going to be better than they are now. So, it just just the way it is. But hey, don't discount it. These kids have talent. Well, yeah, and and don't don't be too shocked because look how different the winter meetings are from twenty years ago. Look yeah. how big the difference the winter meetings are from when you first started. Yeah, no, I mean the technology, the media aspect, uh, seeing the numbers. I mean, it's just percentage. I mean, I'm sure it's not official. Uh, the kid out of Linden, but you know, if, if you're that big of a star in a nation's cat in a, in New York City, uh, and, and you hit sixty two balls, I mean, home runs over the fence. And after Otani, you're probably the most marketable person in profession in Major League Baseball. Uh, those are the numbers. Otani is so interesting what the Angels are going to do with him. I know there's only so much you can say, but when you have a player that's a two-way player, but and I do say but, and I'm like I'm like the and I and I and I and I, and I, and I, and I what's the but? Yes, <laughs> here you go. All right. Yeah, I mean, Every single time I talk about this, people go, Townsend, yeah, you're an idiot. Yeah. yeah. He can only pitch in a six-man rotation. There's not a lot, not a lot of teams can't put five starters. He's in a six-man rotation. He only DHs. If he ever gets hurt, well, if he takes up two spots, you can only replace him with one guy on the roster. So you start to – I know he's great, but is his greatness really – if he's great for, like, a team that has unbelievable depth, if you're a team that doesn't have unbelievable depth – there, there seems to be. I mean, because the Angels, the Angels have a hard time finding starting pitching. So having a six man rotation has not worked for them. Yeah, I mean that's not an indi indictment on on Shohei. I mean he's down there. I mean he's a top five on, on the mound. He's top five at the plate. He's actually probably uh, top five, if not higher, fastest uh, 
fastest guys in the league. I think he led the league in triples or amongst the league leaders two years ago, uh, along with the 40 home runs, along, along with um, being top two or three in strikeouts in the whole league. So now, and, and from a face of the franchise, I mean, uh, if, he, if he was born in the United States, he'd probably be the first pick of the draft. As a quarterback, he, he might be a, a, a point guard that, you know, playing NBA right now, averaging 25 points a game. The kid, he's a, he's a unicorn. He's a unique athlete. He's um, worldwide known. How do you get yeah. more volume out of yeah, him? Yeah, I mean, they got plenty of volume. I mean, just the – nobody goes through – I remember the White Sox when they won the World Series. Uh, Kenny Williams, one of my mentors out there, phenomenal executive in person. Uh, when they won the World Series, their, their health, their starting rotation, people stayed healthy throughout the year. But then you flip it over five years later – the Phillies actually had a rotation would would have six All Stars, you know, going into the season, and, and they had rotation issues within the first two weeks. So you always got to plan. Um, there's power in numbers. You got to have depth. I mean, it, baseball comes down to most talent on the field, who's got depth, and guys in their prime years. You have that combination, you have a really strong chance to win. Speaking of Kenny Williams, the product of the East Bay in Oakland and former Stanford great. Uh, your guys is Pac-12. What's happening with you? Because, of course, if you don't know, Billy O <laughs> is a former two-way star at the University of Arizona, both football and baseball. What is going on? Well, you were Pac-10. Uh, where, where, What's going on with your Pac-12? Yeah, I mean, just like, you know, the winter meetings or anything else. I mean, if you look at the numbers, I mean, the, um, the college football playoff is, is four this year. It's going to be 12 pretty soon. I mean, the, the numbers are astronomical on television, on the field and off the field, and, and it's only getting better. So, yeah, I mean, I saw where SC, they still they still might go to the East Coast. What conference are they going to be in? Big Ten. Yeah, I mean, I don't know demographic-wise. I mean, I'm trying to imagine the water polo game on Tuesday. <laughs> I mean, how they're going to travel all the way to Michigan just for that and come back. So, But as far as the football on Saturday – I mean, they can play the big game in Columbus. They can play it in Ann Arbor, and they can play it in Los Angeles as well. I mean, are are, are you looking forward to that big rivalry of UCLA Maryland or USC Rutgers? Yeah, I mean USC Rutgers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there you go. I mean, I, I can't think of uh, the the twins that play for the Patriots. I, I know they were Rutgers guys. One guy's on TV right now. Uh, the other kid's still a, a good defensive back for Bill Belichick's defense. And uh, USC, Lincoln Riley out there, uh, phenomenal year. They're going to finish in the top 10. Uh, UCLA had a good year. That was a great game, 48-45 between the Trojans and the Bruins out there at the Rose Bowl. Uh, Oregon's always got a formidable squad. Uh, Bear Down, uh, Arizona. Hey, what happened uh, to Bear uh, Down? Yeah, yeah Jed Fish. Um, we, we beat the Sun Devils this year, <laughs> and, and, and we're, we're surging ahead. And I like the ASU hire. Uh, kids out of Chaparral High School. Uh, he's, got, he's the youngest coach in Division One, 32 years old. I watched his press conference, and he brought a ton of energy. So uh, the Pac-12, and we're back. I mean, we're, we're going to challenge the SEC at some point. All right, let's end on this. We're, <coughs> we're, we're heading to the holidays. We're heading to Christmas. We know you're one of the busiest workers in the game. Billy Bean has always talked about with you know how much you travel and how much you do. He's you know you've you've been one of his right hand guys for so long. Um, what do you do from, like, here to spring training? I mean, there's always something to do. I mean, whether you can go to Latin America anytime, whether they're playing winter ball, a uh, 16-year-old kid uh, getting signed in one of those countries in Latin America. So you got plenty of options that way. Uh, you got preparation before the draft, doing follow lists, uh, doing winter or fall baseball out there. There's somebody always playing. Um I got a football crew. I normally um, get my fantasy team rocking and rolling on Sunday, so do a little bit of that. Um, eat a lot of turkey. Uh, I'm more of a um, pumpkin pie guy over or, over um, sweet potato. But, yeah, you, you, you mix in sports. You mix in football. You mix in uh, baseball, basketball, travel a little bit, have a lot of fun. I mean, I'm blessed, 51 years old, been in this game my whole life. Uh, it's like almost if it's a passion, it's almost like you've, you've never worked a day in your whole life. 
Well, I'll tell you what, this is the guy that uh, made sure we got Yoannis Cespedes. You got a Yo- you got another Yoannis Cespedes in your back pocket? <laughs> I, I'm not sure I can fit Yoannis Cespedes in my back pocket, but, uh, yeah, there's always – I mean, the game's global. I mean, you saw the yeah. WB, WBC's coming up. That's exciting. You're going to see, see, you know, following the World Cup, too, where you're seeing the flags waving, the music, the food, uh, um, the energy – and we're going to back that up this year with the WBC, have the first full spring training that we've had in the last three years, and we're going to follow with the, another 162-game uh, cage match out there across the United States and uh, stretch out a little bit globally, too. I think we've got London coming up, Mexico still might venture into Asia. I mean, hey, we're blessed out here in sports for a living, watching that competition, seeing these guys get better, you know, Seeing the money flow on, on all all sorts, the passion of the fans, the energy, uh, it couldn't be better. Um, j- just blessed to be here and and to trying to make it happen. That's the great Billy Owens, assistant general manager of your Oakland Athletics. Uh, great stuff. Happy holidays, and we will see you in Mesa, Arizona. Happy holidays. Bear down. Go A's. We got more coming up next right here. We're here all day long. A's cast live. The Coliseum has gone by many names, but none better than The Last Dive Bar. Hi, everyone. Ken Korak here, and my friends at Last Dive Bar are helping us celebrate our longtime home. Last Dive Bar has the most unique merchandise for all Oakland baseball fans. T-shirts, sweatshirts, the Ray Fossey line, and my personal favorite, the lights have taken full effect. Visit their website at lastdivebar.com or follow them on social media at Last Dive Bar. All proceeds are invested back into the A's Community Fund and their affiliated charities. Go to lastdivebar.com. That's Last Dive Bar. The Oakland Athletics begin spring training on February 25th. Now's the time to make plans to catch us in Mesa, Arizona, and enjoy the sunshine of your family and friends. Buy your tickets early for the best seats at the lowest prices as your green and gold take on the Giants, Dodgers, Padres, Angels, and more at Ojo Cam Stadium. And Tony, it's a deep drive to right in the corner. Gritchick going back, he'll turn and watch it fly. Get your tickets at athletics.com slash spring. That's athletics.com slash spring. This is Chris Townsend for the Chicken Pie Shop of Walnut Creek. Great news. Our indoor dining is back along with our beautiful patio dining. Come taste our world-famous chicken pie that has been served in Southern California for 83 years. The Chicken Pie Shop of Walnut Creek has one of the most dynamic menus plus a full bar. Pot pies, gourmet burgers, sandwiches, salads, flatbreads, and more. Don't forget, we still do takeout and delivery. For all the information, go to chickenpieshopwc.com. That's chickenpieshopwc.com. Senior writer for MLB Pipeline, Jim Callis, stopped by A's Cast Live and discussed the prospects he likes in the A's farm system. I like Ken Waldachuk. I think he's a little unheralded. I think Tyler saw like Shea Langoliers got there this year. I really like Shea Langoliers. I think having Shea Langoliers makes it easier to let Tyler Soderstrom do what he does best, which is hit. And it's always tough when you have a really offensive minded catcher like Tyler was, where if you catch him, it detracts from his hitting because of the time you have to devote to catching and then the physical toll. So I think they're going to get more out of Tyler Soderstrom's bat. To listen to the full interview and much more, go to athletics.com slash A's cast. Humanity has accomplished a whole lot so far. We created penicillin, the automobile, and the internet. Not to mention drones, duct tape, and the hot dog. It's all thanks to the power of human connections. And Ring Central's here to make that even easier, more seamlessly and securely on a platform built to grow your business. Say hello to a whole new way to say hello. Visit ringcentral.com and say hello to possibilities. Ring Central. Message, video, phone, together. If you're looking for a new mattress, Nest Bedding has you covered. Sleep on the same mattress Hall of Famer Ricky Henderson sleeps on. Nest Bedding is a national brand with family-owned prices and service. You can shop at one of their burial locations and all stores are sanitized and safe. Or you can navigate their easy-to-use website, nestbedding.com. That's nestbedding.com. Green and Gold fans, use the coupon code Oakland and you'll get 10% off your entire order. Nest Bedding, love where you sleep. Some things just go together. Peanut butter and jelly, cookies and milk. 
Oakland and Kaiser Permanente. If that last one caught you off guard, it shouldn't, because Kaiser Permanente has been helping keep Oakland healthy since our very beginning. And as the official healthcare partner of the Oakland A's, that won't be changing anytime soon. Whatever you may need, you can trust Kaiser Permanente to help keep you feeling your best. Kaiser Permanente, thrive. Visit kp.org today. Coming in at five foot three inches, it's number one mom. She switched to Xfinity and got the all new three for one bundle. Unlimited internet, streaming, and Xfinity mobile. All for what you could pay wireless companies for just one 5G unlimited line. Boom shakalaka. Go to Xfinity.com slash three for one. Call 1-800-XFINITY or visit an Xfinity store today. Limited time offer. Restrictions apply. Xfinity mobile requires post pay Xfinity internet. After 24 months, regular rates apply to all services and devices. Unlock offers and receive exclusive in-game features by downloading the MLB Ballpark app for iPhone and Android today. Plus, get the latest information on game times, schedules, and more. A's Cast Live continues from the town. Here's Chris Townsend. Well, if you're watching our coverage of the World Series, Zach Kreiser from Yahoo Sports joined us from New York. We got him here in san diego welcome from the big apple big news from your area but more importantly no winter coat no layers you get to put on just a regular shirt walk around town how nice is that yeah we were talking uh, you know had to break out the spring gear again to come out to san diego so you know i don't mind the winter meetings being here as opposed to somewhere cold like where i live so uh you know that's been good uh, obviously, always just thinking about Aaron Judge in New York, even though we're out here until early this morning. Uh, you know, he just he signed at a very New York time, even though he, it was out in San Diego. So. OK, so what time? So I woke up. We, we go on at nine. I woke up at seven thirty and my alarm goes off and I look at my phone and it's all Judge. Right. Um, what time did this go down? Because we were up late last night. Like, what time did this go down? Yeah, I mean. I can't say I uh, know firsthand, but the you know the reporting is that he came into San Diego and had one last meeting with uh, AJ Preller and the Padres last night, who tried to make a little push. I don't, I don't think they ever made a formal like money offer. Uh, and then sometime early this morning, I, you'd have to assume he was leaning this way and had kind of talked to people and said, "Hey, I'm just giving it one last thought, and here I think I want to stay with the Yankees." and uh, you know, the news broke. I think MLB Network's John Morosi had it at 5.30 this morning, San Diego time. And then by, you know, by the time the normal people in this hotel woke up, it was uh, time to write about it. But, you know, I, I think we'd seen those numbers that, that it was up toward $40 million a year, nine years. That was really the, the threshold where he was going to be good to sign. Uh, and they got there and he's going to go back to the, the Bronx. You, you know, what, 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 what is what's interesting I don't. Th- I always thought he would sign. I, I thought you, you. To me, I would have thought there's red flags, and I and some people completely disagree with me. But if 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 you are in the entertainment business and you're starring in New York, and you're saying I want to leave that, I, I, I have questions about that. I mean, this is the biggest stage. This is where your legacy. You know, you try and say, you know. You think about when I die, and I know this is morbid, but when I die, I'm going to have a monument out there with guys like Babe Ruth and Derek Jeter and Mantle and Mays and Reggie Jackson and all these guys, Joe Torrey and, you know, my grandkids and their kids and their kids will always see that, you know, you just don't leave that to go say, I want to go play for the San Francisco Giants. I just couldn't buy that. Right. I I looked into this a little bit, just like the historical comparison. I looked at the 100 most lucrative deals that had been signed in baseball history, which, you know, are mostly in the past 10 years, uh, just because of numbers going up. And uh, one of the weird things I found was that actually if guys make it all the way to free agency, they had overwhelmingly left. It was, you know, I think 53 guys out of these 100 had made it all the way to free agency. They didn't sign an extension. So more than uh, half. More than half, and 47 of them left. Only six stayed with the team that they were originally with uh, once they actually reached the open market. But it's kind of a tricky, you know, the A's, unfortunately, were the victim of some of these, like Jason Giambi left, but he went to the Yankees. You know, the Yankees weren't losing a lot of guys from that group. 
So it's always tricky because it's not always the same situation. Sometimes it's smaller market teams that can't pony up when the Red Sox, Yankees, Giants, Dodgers come calling. This case, obviously, was the Yankees versus other huge spending teams. But yeah, I think especially after last year, it was an imperative that the Yankees resign him. It, this guy is guaranteed these historical markers around the stadium. They're going to be talking about that 62 homer season forever, and they don't want it to be Aaron Judge who was here and left broke Roger Maris record. They want it to be Aaron Judge who was here forever broke Roger Maris record, and now you can luxuriate in all of it forever. So. Yeah, I you look at it like it. I knew it was going to happen, but the biggest, you know, I, I chastised the Giants because the Giants, I thought it was just foolish to come out there and say we're not going to be outbid. They let that they let that get leaked, right? Because they are so worried about their image of being cheap. You look at the Boston Red Sox right now, and you look at the San Francisco Giants. Both these organizations look cheap. They got a ton of money. They're not spending a ton of money. They're not spending on, you know, trying to sell that, hey, we didn't get Aaron Judge and we lost out to the Yankees. And, oh, my God, the Padres were the mystery team and they were offering more. But we got Mitch Hanniger, (laughs) right? And then you look at the Boston Red Sox. So they're a train wreck like Bogarts is probably going to leave and they're going to go. We got Kenley Jansen, old man closer. I mean, you're looking at these two franchises that have made a lot of money. They've had that success. And lately, the way they've been run, I mean, their fan bases, I know for a fact the Giants are not happy. And I know for a fact Red Sox fans are just furious. <laughs> the Red Sox, hey, I mean, at least the Red Sox finally signed someone earlier this week. It was, ah, oh, they tried. Ah, oh, they tried. It's like we, they lost out to the Tampa Bay Devil Rays on Zach Eflin. And it's like, okay, well, I think you probably could have beat the, the, the Rays on the money. You probably could have done that. But uh, yeah, the Giants are more interesting to me. I feel like they are going to make a big splash. I don't know if it's Carlos Correa. I don't know if it's uh, a trade of some sort. I I don't know where they're going exactly. But they've obviously had these longer deals that Farhan Zaidi inherited when he became uh, president of baseball operations that are coming off the books. They've got no money committed, uh, guaranteed beyond next year until they sign this Hanager deal. So I think they've got a ton of room and I would expect them to do something, especially considering how much pressure there is to kind of keep up with the Dodgers and the Padres. Uh, the, the Red Sox, we have a little bit more of a track record of they've had money. They've gotten rid of a lot of money in addition, whereas the Giants have sort of just been letting it play out and having OK teams. Uh, it's a weird dynamic. But yeah, I, I'd say both of those teams are under some pressure to look at the rest of this this free agent lineup and make a move, whether it's the Red Sox bringing back Bogarts or the Giants making a move for a big shortstop. I you they're going to want to see something out of this. Okay. At some point, someone's going to have to look into this because I'm floored because I actually grew up here in San Diego. Um, I remember when Ray Kroc, I was a real little kid. He owned McDonald's. He started McDonald's, bought the Padres and he went for it in the early eighties where he brought in Dick Williams. Remember got Garvey got, you know, Garvey was from the Dodgers, the trade. You got Goose Gossage, Craig Nettles, who he brought back home as a San Diego guy. They built this team that lost to the Tigers in 84, but they went for it. They spent a lot of money. And then since then, eh, you know, years, you know, Padres are not a big market team. My father always used to say it. You got the you got the Pacific Ocean to the west. You got Mexico to the south. You got Arizona, the desert east, where he's going after this on vacation. And you got L.A. to the north. You're kind of boxed in. So with that idea and not being a great sports town, you've lost the NBA. You've now lost the NFL. How the hell are the Padres making all this money and spending? They're, they're offering Trey Turner. They're offering... They're offering Judge now, supposedly four hundred million. You've got you already got Tatis at what three forty two, Machado at three hundred. You still got to do with Juan. So let's not forget, everybody forget they just got Juan Soto, who's going to command over four hundred million. Where are they getting all this money? I mean, it's really interesting the way it's crazy. It, yeah. A team owner Peter Seidler, I, I remember he was on an ESPN broadcast talking about just he he wants to make them more competitive with the Dodgers. He views the Dodgers, I think he said, as the dragon to the north or something like that. And he wants to build up the Padres so that they can be the dragon slayer. They can take down the Dodgers. And obviously they did it in the playoffs once, but to be consistently competitive, you have to swim in those waters, which they've done with Machado. They tried with Hosmer that didn't work out that well. They obviously went and got uh, Juan Soto and extended Fernando Tatis Jr. So 
you know, to some extent, I think every MLB team owner, if you could have bought the team, you probably have the capacity to do this, at least in spurts. That's the question. How long can they keep doing it? Is it something where they need to make the playoffs a lot and continue building revenue and selling merch to make this possible going forward? Or is this a sustainable level of investment? And you're right. I don't think we totally know that. Uh, We're certainly going to find out how serious they are about extending Juan Soto over the next year. Uh, If he makes it to free agency and, and, you know, they haven't signed him yet, what does that say about their willingness to go uh, to to keep going on this investment? Uh, There's also Manny Machado. Like, like did, did, did this, did this audition trading for him and he clearly did not want to swing the bat. The numbers showed it. I know a bunch of my buddies and my brother people here end up that the Soto trade was like the biggest thing for them. And then he was the biggest letdown because he did not play well. He did not have a great summer in San Diego. So I'm wondering yeah. like the fact that they've now gone after Turner, they've now reportedly gone after judge. Have they soured on Juan Soto? I don't know if they've soured on him. I, I think if you, you know, uh, <laughs> If you have something that you can guarantee, that's a little we don't know that he's even open to an extension. You know, he he turned down the uh, the Washington Nationals extension offer, which, you know, uh, that was a little low. I don't think it was necessarily that he wasn't open to an extension. It was the number just wasn't close. But we just don't know for sure if he's willing to resign before he gets to free agency. And if he gets to free agency, you know, we've seen even the New York Yankees can get pretty panicked if your cornerstone is walking out the door or could walk out the door. So I understand the impulse to say, hey, we can get a star that's signed and committed to here for a decade. We should take that opportunity if it arises uh, and we'll figure out Juan Soto later. Uh, The other piece of this puzzle is Manny Machado has played really well for them the whole time. He was a stud. His opt out comes up after next season. uh, And if he continues playing well. Nothing against the Padres, but he will probably exercise that because he'll be worth even more on the market than the rest of his deal. So there's a possibility that they're waiting to see how that plays out before they move on Soto. But the the whole dynamic is, yeah, the Padres are fishing for superstars uh, pretty widely. You know, they're they're willing to cast a wide net. If you are an elite talent, they will be in on you and see what they can get. Yeah, it's 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 pretty amazing. And you know what? You can't take the money to the grave. You why, why not as an owner have a good time and just spend, spend? I mean, uh, we believe that's what Steve Cohen, uh, Uncle Steve, as you guys like to call him back in New York, is going to do with the New York Mets. So now Correa was so in, I mean, um, Judge was so interesting because when that kind of amount of money is out there, right? Like you're offering like crazy money to one guy, you can't really do other business because you got to wait to see how this money you're potentially are going to invest. But if you're one of the teams like the Giants, I guess we're going to say the Padres now. If you're one of these teams that lost out on Judge, now you got all this money. Is this where the spinning now? I mean, where the we got three shortstops left. There's still players. Is this when the dam breaks? I, I think we're going to see the shortstops and the remaining starting pitchers really do well. Uh, I don't think uh, we know exactly how many years. The Trey Turner deal was odd because he did a thing the Phillies have done several times now where they go to a really long term so they can give you a bigger overall salary, but smaller in each year. Uh, And I don't know if that's necessarily what Carlos Correa, Xander Bogart, Stansby Swanson, I don't know if that's what they're going for, but the bar of total salary that Trey Turner set is really interesting and you have to assume that Carlos Correa and Scott Boris are trying to exceed that. So I would say Correa feels like the the one that'll really get things rolling where if once he's off the board, everyone starts moving along and filling up their roster. Uh and then Carlos Rodon, uh probably the best starting pitcher left on the board. He has to love what uh, Jacob deGrom, Justin Verlander, all these precedents that have been set kind of going one year longer than people thought they would. You know, coming into the offseason, I think the best projection for Carlos Rodon was a very similar deal to the Kevin Gossman, Robbie Ray deals, five years, $125, $130 million. Uh, Now I think he's probably looking at six years and something over 150. So, you know, we're seeing the market expand a little bit, especially for those top talents at starting pitcher and shortstop. And and 
it's just going to take a team willing to go that extra mile. And then you'll start seeing things fly off. And I got to think our old buddy, Chris Bassett has to be feeling pretty good. I mean, if you want one guy out of all the, I mean, all these other guys, you know, you look at them, there's question marks, right? Age, you think about injury, you know, ever since Bassett went through Tommy John with us, had some setbacks, but got healthy. He's been an absolute workhorse. Right. He's been super reliable. And I mean, in division, the the Texas Rangers obviously went out, splash made the signing with DeGrom. I was pretty surprised that their next signing was Andrew Heaney, who's another guy who you could pretty easily get like nine starts from him. That could be <laughs> his season. Uh, I, I thought that a team that's clearly trying to step up like that, I thought it made a lot of sense for them to go after someone like Bassett, maybe like Nate Evaldi, someone who's uh, proven in recent years that they're going to go out there and give you at least 20, 25 starts, six innings a start, you know, that sort of pitcher, I thought made a lot of sense for them. All right. We have a, we have a signing by the Oakland athletics, Joel Sherman of the New York post and MLB network has said the A's have signed. Aletnis Diaz, the former Houston Astros, St. Louis Cardinal to a two year deal somewhere in the $14 million range. I don't know if that means, 14 a year or 14 combined? No, I think that's going to be a combined. So, so two for so seven per year, if that's what it is. Okay. I mean, he's a nice multi-positional piece. He Another can one, yeah. play most of the infield positions. I don't know that people are rushing to have him at shortstop even more anymore, even though that is what he came up as with the St. Louis Cardinals. And uh, he's been a pretty effective contact hitter. Certainly, uh, if the A's take a step forward in 2024, you'd probably want him as a bench bat to kind of float around behind your younger guys. But in the meantime, he's a good major league piece who can stand in there. And we signed uh, Peterson yesterday. So we're, we're getting versatile players, you know, cause, cause this is the, this is the thing that we had our general manager, David force, who was kind of peeved about all the Sean Murphy going, Sean Murphy's not even close to being traded yet. And that's being proven out to be right. When everybody else had this like a done deal, somebody's ready. And it's like, no, but he said, we have contracts out there and we're like, great. Let's see how it works out. Well, we've had two guys sign. Is it two or three? We had two and Peterson, a trade and a trade. Chad Smith, Chad for Smith, Jeff Criswell. So, you know, that's kind of the thing that we're looking with the athletics. And I think whether it's the A's, uh, we talked to Derek Shelton here, the Pirates manager, uh, Tori Lovello, we, the manager of the Arizona Dimebacks. For the smaller market teams, it seems here in San Diego, the key is versatility. Sign guys at the right price who can play a lot of different positions. Yeah, I mean, to get through a season, 162 games, it's a long time. A lot of guys have injuries, ineffectiveness, whatever that goes on, and you need players who can step in to right field on a day when maybe that's not their main position, but you need their bat in the lineup. But, you know, I, I think we... We've seen, you mentioned the Diamondbacks. They have like five outfielders yeah. right now. Tons uh, of athletes, up. And yeah. So, you know, you look at a team, the A's obviously maybe, maybe not, not wanting to move Sean Murphy just yet, but they have a surplus long-term at catcher because they've developed players well there and traded for players in that position. So you're going to see small market teams leverage those surpluses to make trades and improve their rosters. It The trade market just really has not happened at the winter meetings yet, so... I think once, you know, maybe it is waiting for some of these bigger free agents to to make their decisions. But I, I do think you'll see smaller market teams kind of leverage those surpluses to improve the rest of their roster. Yeah, people always need to understand that is it's easier to pay for a player than trade for a player. Because if I just pay for a guy, if I sign you, I'm just giving you cash. Right. And it's cash and I can budget that and we can do a lot of things with that. I can pay over X amount of years. Like we can say it's two years, whatever, but really I can pay it for four or five to first some money. I can do that trade. I've got to give up assets to get you, which is a whole, not only do I got to pay you, I got to give up assets. So buying in free agency is a whole heck of a lot easier and less painful than it is trading. When it's guys, you know, you've invested a lot of time and energy. You've gotten to know these guys. You might have drafted these guys and watched them come up and help them, you know, refine their slider, whatever it is. You've put a lot of investment in there and you probably believe in these guys. That's why you have them. You know, that's why you picked them or signed them. 
you have gone after them because you believe in their talent. And that's a really, you know, it's much more difficult mentally to give that up than to just say, oh, I think this guy's worth $9 million and pay him $9 million. Much harder to say, is this player on another team who we don't have as much information on? You almost never have as much information on that other team's guy. Is he really going to be better for us than this guy we know we like? All right, let's end on this. Very smart by you, veteran move. Come out west. You just don't hop on a plane and go back home. (laughs) We're going to make this thing a vacation. Yes. Going to Joshua Tree, which I've never never been to. Going to check out the, the desert. I briefly looked into staying at the hotel that you two stayed at when they recorded uh, Joshua Tree, the album. Did, didn't didn't do that. Went with an Airbnb. But, Look it up, kids. It was a big you know, album back in the uh, day. Yeah, big album. Uh, so, you know, I, I've never been, but I'm going to go out to the National Park, walk around a little bit, uh, see the, the desert creatures. So, should be fun. Yeah, why not, right? You're out here. It's right before the holidays. It's, this is a good time to actually travel and get stuff done because yeah. not everybody's doing it. And it's still warmer in the desert than it is in New York. So, you know, got to take advantage while I can. Let's end on this. Anything. I mean, because literally what time is this thing in? We're going to be out till four o'clock, but basic kind of like judge hopefully shows up today. Uh, we'll have some more signings and then everybody's going to head back. You think any big more, any do we have a Carlos Correa? Do we have a, a Xander Bogarts? Do we have any big names you think sign? Maybe our buddy Chris Bassett. Does anybody sign before we get out of here? I I don't know that I see the starting pitcher. I don't, I don't know that I see many more starting pitchers going until Rodon figures out where he's going. But the uh, I, I could definitely see a shortstop or two signing. We know that Carlos Correa has met with several interested teams, the Cubs, the Phillies. Obviously, the Phillies made their choice with Trey Turner. But I could see a Correa or a Xander Bogart. Xander Bogart seems to be choosing between the Red Sox and the field, but uh, I, I could see one of those shortstop signing before we go. That's that seems very reasonable. Always love having you on the show. Enjoy the rest of your time in San Diego. Enjoy the desert, and we'll talk to you uh, in the new year. Thank you. Always appreciate it. The Duke Jim Duquette will join us next. Coming up right here on A's Cast Live. Oakland Athletics spring training is right around the corner and you can be part of the excitement. Get your tickets now and plan ahead for a fun-filled trip to Mesa, Arizona this spring. Pack the sunscreen, bring your friends, pick up some ballpark classics and watch your green and gold get ready for the regular season. Get your tickets today to see the Athletics take on the Giants, Padres, Cubs, Dodgers and more. Tickets are on sale now at athletics.com spring. That's athletics.com spring. The Coliseum has gone by many names, but none better than The Last Dive Bar. Hi, everyone. Ken Korak here, and my friends at Last Dive Bar are helping us celebrate our longtime home. Last Dive Bar has the most unique merchandise for all Oakland baseball fans. T-shirts, sweatshirts, the Ray Fossey line, and my personal favorite, the lights have taken full effect. Visit their website at lastdivebar.com or follow them on social media at Last Dive Bar. All proceeds are invested back into the A's Community Fund and their affiliated charities. Go to lastdivebar.com. That's Last Dive Bar. Com. Coming in at five foot three inches, it's number one mom. She switched to Xfinity and got the all new three for one bundle unlimited internet, streaming, and Xfinity Mobile. All for what you could pay wireless companies for just one 5G unlimited line. Boom shakalaka. Go to Xfinity.com slash three for one, call 1 800 Xfinity, or visit an Xfinity store today. Limited time offer, restrictions apply. Xfinity Mobile requires post pay Xfinity Internet. After 24 months, regular rates apply to all services and devices. Senior writer for MLB Pipeline, Jim Callis, was on A's Cast Live and discussed which A's prospect impressed him at the Arizona Fall League. Zach Geloff kind of stood out to me the most. You know, I'll tell you what surprised me the most about him. He looked pretty good at second base. You know, I think of him as more of a third base. I know they yeah. him a lot at second. He looked pretty good at second base when I saw him. I was there for a week. I'll go back to the final week too. But he was um he was pretty impressive. I mean, I know he can hit. You know, he's moved real quick in the minors. I remember I actually saw him for the first time in Arizona. We broadcast the MLB four tournament. This would have been 2019. It was his first game he played in college. I remember watching him in BP, thinking I'd never heard of him. The way we split the draft in MLB, I have half the country, but I didn't have Zach Geloff, who's from New Jersey. So I didn't really know much about him. I'm like, man, this guy looks really good in BP. And then he hit three doubles in the game. But I think Zach Geloff, you know, I think 
you know, the question is, is he a guy who's a solid player versus a guy who's like a cornerstone you build a team around? He might be more of that solid regular than a, you know, true star you build around. But he, he looked really good in Arizona. To listen to the full interview and much more, go to athletics.com slash A's cast. Hey, A's fans, you know that running your own business is a slugfest every day. That's why businesses have been counting on Mechanics Bank since 1905. From operating lines of credit to equipment and real estate loans, they can help build your lineup to meet today's challenges and prepare for tomorrow's opportunities. Stop by your local branch or visit MechanicsBank.com today. Mechanics Bank, the official East Bay Bank of the Oakland A's. Member FDIC and equal housing lender. All loans subject to program eligibility and credit approval. This is Chris Townsend for the Chicken Pie Shop of Walnut Creek. Great news! Our indoor dining is back, along with our beautiful patio dining. Come taste our world-famous chicken pie that has been served in Southern California for 83 years. The Chicken Pie Shop of Walnut Creek has one of the most dynamic menus, plus a full bar. Pot pies, gourmet burgers, sandwiches, salads, flatbreads, and more. Don't forget, we still do takeout and delivery. For all the information, go to chickenpieshopwc.com. That's chickenpieshopwc.com. The Oakland Athletics begin spring training on February 25th. Now's the time to make plans to catch us in Mesa, Arizona, and enjoy the sunshine of your family and friends. Buy your tickets early for the best seats at the lowest prices as your green and gold take on the Giants, Dodgers, Padres, Angels, and more at Ho-Ho Cam Stadium. And Tony, it's a deep drive to right in the corner. Gritchick going back. He'll turn and watch it fly. Get your tickets at athletics.com slash spring. That's athletics.com slash spring. Some things just go together. Peanut butter and jelly. Cookies and milk. Oakland and Kaiser Permanente. If that last one caught you off guard, it shouldn't, because Kaiser Permanente has been helping keep Oakland healthy since our very beginning. And as the official healthcare partner of the Oakland A's, that won't be changing anytime soon. Whatever you may need, you can trust Kaiser Permanente to help keep you feeling your best. Kaiser Permanente, thrive. Visit kp.org today. Streaming from the East Bay, A's Cast Live can continues with Chris Townsend. Well, you heard me say this yesterday, and I'll say it again today, that there is one show that I consistently listen to every day. And now the funny thing is, since my course, we got the golf carts with the speakers in it. Yes. I'll be listening to Power Alley, and people will say all the time, like, what the hell are you listening to? I'm like, it's the Power Alley, Sirius XM, Channel 89, right? Jim Duquette, former general manager. Everybody knows you. And then I say Mike Farron, and they go, who? (laughs) Mike's voice is more recognizable than he is his face. Thank God. And I don't know if that's good or bad, guys, you know? (laughs) But, I mean, that's the reality. He's got that deep voice and that big baritone voice, and he can put you to sleep on on a dime. If you're having trouble sleeping, you can listen to our show and get a good little nap in. But I am curious, Tony, because every time – you talk about your golf and your listeners. What's your takeaway? Is, 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 do you come back like this? I, like, because I'm having problems with my takeaway. Yeah, because you're all hands. Yeah, hands are bad. Okay, so I'm going to keep them shoulders, steady and just, big, mu- and big muscle turn. shoulders. Okay, all right. That's when, good, once you go hands, that's you're my dead. tip. All right, you're dead. I, I like to hear that. You got to think all about too. your shoulders and your big <laughs> muscles because once you do this, you're gonzo. Hey, before we talk about all this money being spent, I had to get that one swing uh, adjustment from an expert the guy who plays a lot plays a lot i, I don't know if you're an expert i'm just going to assume you are because you play a lot i'm pretty good yeah so i figured you were so all right that's that's a good tip i'm gonna work on that well today. i want to pump you up first because i think about you know you had a great career as an executive and then now you turn media and what's so fascinating is to hear you know because we were so used to just ex-players and ex yeah, players, right. they don't know the business of baseball. Let's be honest. You have run multiple franchises. You know, like when we're talking about Judge and we're talking about Correa and we're talking, you've been here, you've done that. And your work on Sirius XM has, and I know you guys got the GM show. I've listened to you guys on Sunday morning. Yeah. I remember when you had Jerry DePoto on. I was going up to Oakland and listening about the breakdown of the J Rod contract, yeah, which yeah. was fascinating, yeah. right? Because okay. it's complicated, right? Yeah, it is. But 
you give me stuff that I can't get from everybody else. And that's why I think your guys' show and what you provide us is second to none. So thank you very much yeah, yeah. as a baseball fan. I tell everybody to get Sirius XM. I love channel 89, channel 88. I get my football fix. Yeah, 89, yes. though, what you do is second to none. It's just a short little twist to the left to get to 88 from 89, right? So, Correct. So after you're done listening to us, just flip it over one, and you got your NFL fix, too. And, and you know, hey, someone's got to pay the salaries, right? So, I mean, pay fair and salary. You get it on your phone. You get it on your computer. Yeah. Sirius I mean, XM, it's a no-brainer. You can brainer. rewind if you want, which we are constantly reminded by the upper management. Hey, yeah. rem remind people you can rewind on the app. So, all right. And you can rewind some of your – and the new – do you have a new car? Yeah. That rewind button, do you have it? Yeah. Do you have a XM on your car? Yeah. Like, that is amazing. You're that's how I like, got it. I got a new car, and I found yeah. you guys, and that's how I yeah. we started having yeah. you guys on. I'm like, this show is incredible. I, terrestrial radio. And then when my subscription was up, oh, yeah. I'm in. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, we'll talk off the air on how to how to make sure you're you're not overpaying for your subscription. We I got we got a little tip for you. You gave me the golf tip. I'm going to give you a, a, renew, a, a subscription renewal I'm tip. here to help pay salaries. I have no problem with <laughs> okay, that. Okay, good, good, good. So the there, money, there you go. The, mo the money gone. I mean, I mean, you dealt with big money. Big, so that's the thing. It's like I'd be breaking out on highs if you, I had you were giving out big money for your time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now sure. this is crazy big money, and all of a sudden you hear about the Padres. Well, first of all, let's do with the team in our area. I thought it was really bad when it was starting to get leaked in our area when they said Giants will not be outbid. I'm like, well, you're either going to get them or you're going to have major egg on your face because yeah, you already right. have a fan base that thinks you're cheap. The Red Sox and the Giants are kind of in a in an area where their fan bases don't like them right now. Yeah. So if you don't land this guy and then the mystery team comes out and they offered more, I mean, if you're a Giants fan waking up and you you won the Mitch Hanniger sweepstakes, yeah. it's not yeah. looking good. No, it, it's it's not. And, you know, they were able to get by two years ago because they won, you know, a gazillion games, 106, right, and won the division. And they pieced it together in a kind of a unique way, and, but everything kind of clicked for them, you know, and they got by with, what was their payroll that year? Maybe 10th highest or 12th highest. Yeah. And we're not, Giants usually spend, have over their years been, you know, top five or so, but they were getting by. And and, and so they, if I were in their front office, I was, well, geez, it worked once. Let's try, why not try it again? You know, and it, and it got derailed. They had injuries, of course. And then you, you know, some the problem with platoon guys is they're inconsistent for, you know, they're, they're platoon guys for a reason. They're inconsistent, right? And so you have a season-long inconsistency that, you know, with a number of players, and now all of a sudden they look like a shell of their former selves, and they're going to have to spend their way out of this again. I, I have more, you know, I don't know locally, you know, you have the feel up there. I, I have more confidence based off of their pursuit of judge that they're going to pivot to something else. There aren't a lot of good options except for the shortstop market, but you were hearing Turner's name up there a little bit. I don't yeah. know if you hear Correa, but Correa I, big. there's yeah. really not much more they can do except go to that shortstop market and either convince them to play a different position or ask Brandon Crawford to move. You know, and I love Brandon Crawford. He's had an unbelievable career, but nothing in his season last year would say, okay, you're the starting shortstop over those free agents that are available. You know, those guys are elite players and can do both. So offensively and defensively. So I, to me, that has to be their next option, you know, because if um, otherwise they're going to be a mediocre team again, and I, that's not in the, they don't want to be, we know they don't want to be mediocre. And then you start thinking about, okay, when you look at the Giants, you look at the Padres, we're still waiting for, you know, the Dodgers have something we haven't heard a lot about, you know, the, the, you know, Padres, big Southern California team we're hearing about. Uh, we haven't heard much from the Angels. Yeah. And there was always the talk about Otani and the Dodgers. They got to replace their left side. Bellinger didn't work mm -hmm. out at center field. Walker Bueller's out for the year. Dodgers have a lot of holes, and we're not hearing anything. We're not hearing a lot there. They keep things very close to the best, but they have, you know, the payroll. They're going to bring their payroll down. You know, the way the new collective bargaining agreement works, for third time penalties going over the luxury tax, you start to lose more draft picks and more um, international money. And they don't want to do that if they don't have, if they, if they can help it. Now I find it hard to believe that they're going to reset under the two thirty three or whatever the luxury tax is. Now that would surprise me, but that's, they're trying to bring their payroll down and just watching Andrew Friedman over the years, they usually do it 
over time. So if they're okay, maybe they get the 250 this year and then the 230 next year, whatever it is, they however they get there. But um, they also have to, there's a Trevor Bauer decision that's coming down the pike here. It's a lot Fairly of money, soon. too. It's a ton of money. I don't expect him to pitch for them. I think that as soon as that uh, ruling comes out, and let's say he's going to pitch for them next year, which I, I don't know, but there's a lot of rumors that he's going to be active at some point. I don't, I don't think he's going to pitch for them. I think they're going to release him. And, but that still hits on your budget, oh, on your AAV. Wow. It's a lot of dough, right? So, so there's a lot of things there that, you know, that was one that, you know, you kind of look at and go, oh, boy, that, that, that can impact you. So having said all that, they still have plenty of money to spend. Padres offered, supposedly offered 400 <laughs> to trade Turner, as you know, like, where'd that come from? Yeah, you know? Yeah. So they're showing that maybe they'll be in on Correa or Bogarts. And so, you know, the division isn't getting any easier. On the NL West, that's that's the thing. Angels, you know, obviously AL West. You're going, uh, you know, Perry. I feel bad for Perry. Perry. The one thing about Perry Manasian, he came over to our set the other day. He goes, you know, I don't like begging people, begging players to come play for us. Uh, Bowden said, well, I'll beg every day of the week. You got to get on your knees, Perry. Like, get down on your knees and beg. So you know, there's a whole different you know, spectrum of of philosophies there. But um, you know, he admitted. He goes, I did not put a collective roster that was talented enough or deep enough to compete. He goes, that's on me for the last two years. And so he's, you know, he's certainly motivated. We'll see if they can, they can come up with a couple other players. Now that you do the show with Jim and Jim floats around all the different shows, which yeah. you guys got the show on it's Sunday mornings. Is that, is that taped? No, no, it's live 10 to one. Yeah. Okay. So how much business did you guys do together back when uh, you guys were GMs? Well, so this is how Bowden would, uh, you know, now Bowden is, is, he's an eccentric uh, general manager and he was during the day. He was, one, he was the youngest at the time. John Daniels, I think surpassed, you know, and got the GM as a 27 year old, but Bowden was like 29 or 30. And, and he was a gunslinger. Like, like when you, he, he reacted, we were talking about this the other day, he would go out on the minor league free agent front and he would sign six catchers, and then bring them all into spring training and none of them and, and promise them that they would have a starting role. And then they all get to spring training. Like, well, he promised me to start role. And like all six were promised the same thing. So like he didn't, he just wanted to get as many talented guys. He didn't really build out the roster in his early days. So, so, you know, personality wise, you know, he's the guy that wore leather pants around the backfields. You know, he was riding the Segway. Only guy, only GM running a segue on the backfields to go see the minor leaguers. So he was he was different. He was out there, but he was really creative. And so he would come to us with like he'd go through the whole roster and go, all right, here's where I think before I could even sell him on what we're looking for. Here's what I think about your team. And he'd go through and he goes, this guy's terrible. That guy's t-. like, he'd be, like <laughs> trashing your team. Half the guy, half the team. You're going, wait a minute. We like him way better than you. Yeah, you know, yeah, so. Yeah. So, you know, and hey, is there anybody on this roster you like, uh, JB? Because, you know, may, maybe we can ma- do a deal like that, you know. And so um, we, because of that kind of bravado, we didn't do any many deals. We might have done a minor league deal. I know Steve Phillips and he did a, a couple of deals. Minor, we traded. So Sean Estes, who we got from San Francisco. Um, I believe we got him from San Francisco. Yeah. Um, in a Shinjo trade, I want to say this is going way back now. Uh, Sean, love you. Um, we traded into Cincinnati to, to Bowden, and Bowden gave us, you know, four guys, and and two of them were like AAA at best. Like he, it wasn't much talent coming back in return. So, but he would call. So we, I'll give you one well, on last example. He'd call up and say, "Hey, this is when he had Barry Larkin. We needed a shortstop for the 2000 season." He goes, "Hey, uh, I'm I'm gonna. You guys are gonna win the World Series." And the only condition, if I trade you this player, is I want a World Series ring. And then he would go, here's my deal. And he'd go, Barry Larkin for it. And he, he'd, like, list four of our top prospects. And it would be, you know, we, nothing we would do. But, but he was always throwing – every day he'd leave a message on the, on, the, on the phones going, here, I got another deal for you, another idea. You didn't like my idea yesterday? And so that was how he did business. And he got a lot accomplished. I mean, you know, 15 years in the big in the big leagues as a general manager is no small task. You know, the New York area. Did you ever think Judge would sign somewhere else? I I didn't, but I was really starting to wonder because as this thing dragged on, um, he was making it painful for the Yankees. That's for sure. And 
I think he was really bothered by the way they they disclosed the negotiations back in the spring. He wanted it kept private. Brian Cashman said we we offered him a seven year deal for two hundred and seventeen million, and he turned it down. And that has a chance when you do that, you're kind of playing a PR game a little bit with yeah. your fan base. <clears throat> so I think that bothered uh, Judge, and I think he that wanted a little payback. And I think he was legitimately though considering the Giants. You know, if it if it I'll go back to the Cano deal when he signed in Seattle. The Yankees made a $175 million offer at the time was a huge offer. The Mariners went to 250. So that difference was so great. Like if the Giants offer was significantly different, I think he's a Giant. But if it was going to be equal, I thought he was going back to the Yankees. So I think that was the deciding factor. Like if the Giants had said, well, okay, the Padres offered 400, we'll offer 400. Take it or leave it. Judge might be a Giant. I don't know. Could be a Padre. He could be a Padre. Maybe the Padres jumped in late because we weren't hearing their name much, you know. No, but, I mean, I mean, we saw he's at Monday Night Football. I don't know if he, did you guys in see Tampa. That? Yeah, he was in Tampa. And then gets on a plane and comes here. You thought, because I saw Larry Bear down in the lobby, and I thought, okay, maybe the Giants are getting him here. One yeah, less spooge. Yeah, sure. But it was not, it had nothing to do with the Yankees or the, it was the Padres, the Padres. to me. It, yeah. That's, that is unbelievable. What is it like as a general manager? And how do you think these guys are feeling? This is beyond generational wealth you're now throwing out. Oh, yeah. I mean, when you start throwing out numbers of 400 million, 360 million, yeah. 340 million, what, what is that like? I mean, as a general, it's not your money. You're giving away. You, this is your. You're hired to do this. Yeah. What is it like negotiating? I mean, at some point, I mean, this is crazy figures. It's crazy figures. I, I talked to Scott Boris. He came on our show yesterday, and he tries to negotiate solely with the owners, right? Because they're the ones that have the wealth. He, they're the ones that are making the final decision. And really, in a good organization, the GM should be your buffer. Let the GM say no, right? And and you know, so and Scott doesn't like no for the answer so he wants to go right and it's hard for an owner to say no like you have they he he they have the money um and so why wouldn't you spend it on this player like he's very convincing in that sense scott is he's very bright baseball mind too but so i think with these owners now with the cba uh settled being settled for a year we've seen upticks like this in the past where the year after there's a lot of money in the market and they start to spend and then when some of these go south and you see the and you see the correction but I'm not surprised that that we're seeing. I'm surprised at the the 50 percent more um, uh, negotiations rather than, you know, because I, I you know, we do predictions all the time. But I think when you look at some of these guys, I'm like, geez, like I thought Turner would be in that range, 275 to 300. I think he's that type of player. So what was, so he got that. But what I'm surprised at is that Judge got to that number in. Uh, who is the other guy? Uh well, even Eflin that got, got 40 million. Like there's some, there's some signings that you're going, boy, I, I don't, I don't, I don't see that. I don't know why you had to go to Taiwan Walker getting uh, 72 million. It I think seems it like was. nothing now, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah tie exactly. on. You're like, Jameson well, okay, tie on. Yeah. he's not a, he's not that type of, he's not an $80 million pitcher, whatever it's like, but they're getting it, you know? So, so there's been some signings that go, whoa, you know, and I think Turner is going to bring up the, the, the Swanson market. And which is going to bring up the Nimmo market, you know. Yeah. So all of these are, you know, probably getting 30, 40 percent higher than maybe we thought. Let's end on this. Billy Bean, obviously, what he's done in the game. I know you know him real well. He's going to join us a little bit later. He's stepping aside, going to be John Fisher's right hand man in a lot of business stuff, but kind of getting away from the baseball operations. When you think of Billy and his career, your dealings with him. Uh, we think of Moneyball. We think of Brad Pitt, the yep. movie, the best-selling book. How uh, what always drives me nuts is when people bring in Moneyball. Yeah, and I go, wait a minute, he had to do it that way. These yes. teams that have money want to do that. They're just cheap. Uh, we're still trying to figure out who who is. It's the Jim Duquette show with some guy from Arizona, right? Is that what it's called? I told you he's trying to spread his name around. No one works the hotel bar better than your partner. I thought I pimped myself out. Mike <laughs> Farron pimps himself out way more. <laughs> so in the end, you know, kind of Billy Bean's last ride as a baseball yeah. executive. How, how how did what was it like dealing with him? How will you remember it? Well, you know, I hope he doesn't leave it, leave the sport entirely. I don't think he will. But, um, you know, listen, he's he is always um, 
one of those guys, those I'll call him more of a pioneer than any anything else, because put the book aside for a minute. They had to find ways to win with you know just different ways to do it from a from a payroll side of things. And that was industry changing. You know, uh, there are others that were that were doing it along the way, but he was most of the time. When he was zigging, others were zagging, all right? And so you followed a lot of the times when he was su- successful, like, okay, how did he build that team? How did, how did that, you know, uh, Miguel Tejada, Mark Mulder, uh, Tim Hudson type team, that money ball, the, it, the book itself in the movie ignores them, but they yeah. were, we all know they were huge parts. Like, Okay, how did, how did he do it there? Like, oh, oh, he had re- three really good starters, and he had an MVP shortstop. Okay, can I put together a team like that? And can I take a, you know, a catcher and move him over to first base? Like he was, they found creative ways to do things. Not not all of them would work for other teams, and not all of them worked for Billy. But he was he was willing to try um, so many different things because of the market that he was in. And I also give him credit because he could have. Like when he was, you know, turned down the Boston Red Sox job, he could have done that. But, you know, that, that you know, that you're always looking for balance in your life. He was he wanted to be near his family, wanted to run this run, you know, the teams that he wanted to run. And so he found he found that to be more important. And I think that also struck me, too, to find a balance, because when you're in these jobs, it's hard to find balance, you know, of spend time with your family. Um, and run teams because it's a it's a long job. It's a long, long uh, 24 hour, you know, seven day a week type of job. So um, I think those are some of the things that that, you know, he had success with, you know, minimal payrolls are always in the bottom 10 every single year. They hardly ever go above that. So, you know, having a plan and then recreating those plans and and, and maintaining relevance for me, it's not easy to do with Oakland's market. And he was the he was the pioneer that did it. Are you ever going to get your Gucci loafers from the Mets? No, this is the best I got, and I had to pay for these. I mean, my my owner, you know, I made a deal. He said, "Hey, you want to trade Roger Cedeno? Um, I'll give you a pair of Gucci loafers." Now he didn't say that I had to, you know, pay, basically take back all of his money to trade him. I mean, I saved him like five hundred grand, but he wanted me to save him eight million. Like we aren't going to do that because Roger Cedeno at that point was at the end of his career. But I traded him. I'm waiting for him. It's 15 years ago. Uncle Steve, let's go. Maybe they got lost in the mail. <laughs> there's a good chance that I could go down to the post office. I'm sure shipping's my been, former been... owner sent it, and you know it's it's unreliable sometimes. Do you do you still have like a mailbox there, and it's that it went from Shea over to City over Field, to City. and yeah. and then it's like sitting there right there, still waiting for you. There's so many people over there now that uh, well, there's uh, there's about I'd say a dozen that I know or hired that are still there. Really, the, the rest of them are gone. I've been been with the Mets since '07, so uh, or I'm sorry, I'm sorry, '05 was the last year. So it's it's you know we're almost 20 years now. So, but I, I should sneak in there someday and see if I can find a <laughs> see if your loafers are there. Mailbox. Well, yeah. <laughs> most of the stuff that that I had there is in my garage in a box. You know, there's a there, there's not enough quality baseball programming because you know at this time of the year everybody's gone into football the nba but your guys show is second to none which you I guys provide you're you. the best show on your network uh i i, I tell fair in this i'll tell i steal from you guys all the time because by the time i come on no one's gonna rem- you know it's such so it's such we're happy to provide yes. content for you yes i am i am definitely <laughs> stealing from you guys i i give you credit uh i talk to guys about your show all the time that's I awesome think, i, I think the dynamic of your guys your personalities you work so well together chemistry is everything yeah, right and yeah. you guys got it and you've been doing it for 12 years that does, as you know that doesn't happen in the industry time. Very, very very long very uh often so yeah we're we're, we're lucky i don't I don't I pretend we don't like each other, but anyway. Uh, most important thing, hands bad, big muscles, turn. Weight goes onto your right side, comes oh, back to your go. left side. There we go. You get I, If I'm you get handsy, it. especially if you I'm go gonna ins- work on it. inside with your hands, I mean, think, it's biomechanics. You go this way, it means yep. you're going to come this way. This weekend, I'm going to the range. The weather's supposed to be nice. I'll report back. Yeah, let me know. Thank you. Thank you for the time. I can send you stuff that would really would help you. I, I will I will take it. Once you, you get got. out of winter and you come see us in Arizona, yeah. be ready to tee it up. <laughs> you got it. Happy holidays. Have Same. a great good Christmas and everything. Yep, and then we'll see you. you uh we'll see you in Mesa. We'll see you in Mesa in the spring. It's not gonna be that long. It's like 
I think we're under 80 days. We're pretty. Close. Oh, it's going to be. It's going to so, be close. Yeah. We got more coming next right here. Ace Cast Live. The Oakland Athletics begin spring training on February 25th. Now's the time to make plans to catch us in Mesa, Arizona, and enjoy the sunshine of your family and friends. Buy your tickets early for the best seats at the lowest prices as your green and gold take on the Giants, Dodgers, Padres, Angels, and more at Ho Cam Stadium. And Tony, it's a deep drive to right in the corner. Gritchick going back. He'll turn and watch it fly. Get your tickets at athletics.com slash spring. That's athletics.com slash spring. Humanity has accomplished a whole lot so far. We created penicillin, the automobile, and the internet, not to mention drones, duct tape, and the hot dog. It's all thanks to the power of human connections. And Ring Central's here to make that even easier, more seamlessly and securely, on a platform built to grow your business. Say hello to a whole new way to say hello. Visit ringcentral.com and say hello to possibilities. Ring Central. Message, video, phone, together. This is Chris Townsend for the Chicken Pie Shop of Walnut Creek. Great news! Our indoor dining is back, along with our beautiful patio dining. Come taste our world-famous chicken pie that has been served in Southern California for 83 years. The Chicken Pie Shop of Walnut Creek has one of the most dynamic menus, plus a full bar. Pot pies, gourmet burgers, sandwiches, salads, flatbreads, and more. Don't forget, we still do takeout and delivery. For all the information, go to chickenpieshopwc.com. That's chickenpieshopwc.com. The Coliseum has gone by many names, but none better than the Last Dive Bar. Hi, everyone. Ken Korak here, and my friends at Last Dive Bar are helping us celebrate our longtime home. Last Dive Bar has the most unique merchandise for all Oakland baseball fans. T-shirts, sweatshirts, the Ray Fossey line, and my personal favorite, the lights have taken full effect. Visit their website at lastdivebar.com or follow them on social media at Last Dive Bar. All proceeds are invested back into the A's Community Fund and their affiliated charities. Go to lastdivebar.com. That's Last Dive Bar. Com. If you're looking for a new mattress, Nest Bedding has you covered. Sleep on the same mattress Hall of Famer Ricky Henderson sleeps on. Nest Bedding is a national brand with family-owned prices and service. You can shop at one of their burial locations, and all stores are sanitized and safe. Or you can navigate their easy-to-use website, nestbedding.com. That's nestbedding.com. Green and Gold fans, use the coupon code Oakland, and you'll get 10% off your entire order. Nest Bedding, love where you sleep. Harold Reynolds was on A's Cast Live and described the phone call he got from Ricky Henderson in 1987. You know, Ricky's always talking in the third person. I'm sure you guys have got to know him a little bit. <laughs> and uh, so, I mean, he may be playing cards and go, Ricky got a sweet hand. Ricky getting really sweat right now. You know, everything's third person with him. And so that year, 1987, it's the only time in the 80s that Ricky did not win a stolen base title. And he's still at that time like 100 bases a year. So I ended up winning that year with 60. I think Ricky got hurt in May or something like that, and he already had 30 in May. So I win on the last day. Willie Wilson had 59. I had 59. I steal a bag. Willie Wilson doesn't. I'm the greatest of all time. You know, I, <laughs> I win the title. Right? So I get home the next day. Season's over. And my phone rings. No caller ID in those days. Hello, Henderson here. What's going on? I'm thinking he's calling to congratulate me. He goes, 60 stolen bases? You ought to be ashamed. Ricky, a 60th All Star break. Click and hung up the phone. <laughs> oh, God, that is so good. That is uh, so good. Oh, so, man. So years later, he goes into a Hall of Fame in Cooperstown, and, you know, Ricky and I are tight. He, he sends a picture for me. And it has, you know, stolen base champ, Ricky Henderson. I love it. It's on my wall at work. To listen to the full interview and much more, go to athletics.com slash A's cast. Coming in at five foot three inches, it's number one mom. She switched to Xfinity and got the all new three for one bundle. Unlimited internet, streaming, and Xfinity Mobile. All for what you could pay wireless companies for just one 5G unlimited line. Boom shakalaka. Go to Xfinity.com slash three for one. Call 1-800-XFINITY or visit an Xfinity store today. Limited time offer. Restrictions apply. Xfinity Mobile requires post pay Xfinity internet. After 24 months, regular rates apply to all services and devices. Hey, A's fans. 
You know that running your own business is a slugfest every day. That's why businesses have been counting on Mechanics Bank since 1905. From operating lines of credit to equipment and real estate loans, they can help build your lineup to meet today's challenges and prepare for tomorrow's opportunities. Stop by your local branch or visit MechanicsBank.com today. Mechanics Bank, the official East Bay Bank of the Oakland A's. Member FDIC and equal housing lender. All loans subject to program eligibility and credit approval. A's fans, there is no better way to stay in touch with the A's and even our players than following us on social media. Just head over to athletics.com slash social. That's athletics.com slash social for a full list of our social coverage from player accounts to Twitter handles and more. Now is the time to stay in touch. Head over to athletics.com slash social. That's athletics.com slash social today. Some things just go together. Peanut butter and jelly. Cookies and milk. Oakland and Kaiser Permanente. If that last one caught you off guard, it shouldn't. Because Kaiser Permanente has been helping keep Oakland healthy since our very beginning. And as the official healthcare partner of the Oakland A's, that won't be changing anytime soon. Whatever you may need, you can trust Kaiser Permanente to help keep you feeling your best. Kaiser Permanente. Thrive. Visit kp.org today. A's Cast Live continues from the town. Here's Chris Townsend. All right, we got to get you updated, as you just heard there with Jim Duquette, about some of the signings that have been going on. Uh, obviously, everybody right now is talking about Aaron Judge, and now Judge is going to stay with the New York Yankees. But uh, run them down, Cody, as uh, Taiwan Walker is going to go to the Phillies. Jamison Tyon, who's he going to? What, what do we got? Tyon's a Cub now. Um, so the ex-Pirate, ex-Yankee is now a Cub. Uh, that came out last night. I think it was four for – let me pull up the doc. It was four for 68, tie on four for 71. It's all reported. Kenley Jansen, and now a Boston Red Sox. Ooh. Two, two for 32. Ridiculous. And uh, Wilson Contreras. That just came ex, down. Ex-Cub, now St. Louis Cardinal. Five for 87 being reported. I guess that theoretically takes the Cardinals out of the Sean Murphy sweepstakes. So Contreras signing from the Cardinals to the Cubs. If you guys don't understand and don't follow it, all you need to do is come down to Mesa when the A's go over to take on the Chicago Cubs. You will find. Outside of Sloan Park is what it's called down there in Mesa, Arizona. You will find merchandise of Cubs merch ripping St. Louis and basically calling them a podunk trash town. It's the hilarious. It's hilarious. You know, they have this hated rivalry. The Cubs and Cardinals, we it's a Midwest thing. We don't really care much about it. But I'm just telling you, this thing is real. They can't stand each other. This is... Big city Chicago against little city St. Louis. I don't think St. Louis is that little of a city, but it is what it is, and they can't stand each other. So for the Cardinals to take Contreras, their catcher, this is a big deal. Yeah, now the Cubs add by getting Tyone, but they lose by losing Contreras. So it's going to be interesting because now you know, the guy left out there is what Christian Vasquez is the, cu- the free agent catcher on the market, former Red Sox and Astro last year. And what happens with Sean Murphy? Is it down down to the, the Rays? Is that is that who it is? Well, that, I, I just told you this two interviews ago. It's better to buy somebody in free agency than to have to trade for a guy. You're going to have to pay him and you got to give up prospects. I mean, Sean Murphy's expensive. Sean Murphy's going to be expensive with dollars. Sean Murphy's going to be expenses with assets. When I can just go buy Contreras, I can just go buy him. It's a lot easier to spend in free agency than it is to do deals for guys where you sit here and you say, you know, that's why it's ridiculous when you hear people say that Sean Murphy, oh, he's controllable. Well, the bottom line is congratulations. Great Brian Cashman walking by, going to the Yes Network uh, as he's going to talk about. Uh, um, Jameson Tyon leaving? About, yeah, about Aaron Judge. Uh, 
Brian Cashman, now the longest term general manager, uh, president of baseball operations, uh, just gave us a big yeah. thumbs up. Yeah. And, he, and he got an extension. It's been a good week for him. Fr fr friend of the program. So oh. I haven't talked to him in a while, but, you know, we have Ka we've had Cashman on the show multiple times. Another we've also forgot uh, a sign of Miss Diaz two years around 14 million dollars, according to Joel Sherman of MLB Network and the New York Post. Is that who's is that who Sherman's with? New York Post. Oh, yeah. And uh, I went back and looked, too, because we we're talking about the draft and how somehow we got the sixth pick in the draft. Can you name the last two guys taken with the sixth pick by the ace? Uh, Hedges. Hedges. Not, no, uh, oh, oh, you're, th you're right. First name, wrong. Austin Hedges, Austin, Austin Hedges, Austin Beck. Oh, Austin Beck. And then, uh, two years prior, or it was actually the year prior, who, by the way, is an absolute bust. Uh, the year prior, they had the six pick, they took, uh, the organization took AJ Puck. So, there's the last two guys taking with the number six overall pick. So, we'll see what happens, but almost a year from uh, less than a year from now in July. I think the draft will be in. Seattle, which is cool that the draft will be at the site of the uh, All Star Game. So a six pick, a's Aletmus Diaz reported two years, fourteen million, and then yesterday the Jace Peterson move, which another super utility guy to play uh, for the organization. So all in the trade, Chad Smith for Jeff Criswell. Can't forget about that one. Well, yeah, if you get if Chad Smith ends up becoming, I mean, it's it's so tough to Rockies and looking. I mean. But a lot of people like this guy's stuff, and it's a, and the really we know how relievers work out. You can find relievers. I mean, ask Tampa. Look at the the Dodgers every year. They sign some no name guy or a guy for like under a million dollars. Yeah, ask the Dodgers. They had a bunch of no name guys pitching in Game Five against the Padres, and they went home. Yeah, they they signed Shelby Miller to a, that was like their big yeah. move so far. They signed Shelby so far. Who knows? They can surprise everyone and say they're signing Correa and Rodon today. There, there, there's some serious head scratching going on here at the winter meetings. I mean, if, if you're if you're if you're a Dodger fan, and what I learned yesterday about the Dodgers, if you weren't paying attention yesterday, what I learned about how there is just like this empty pit in everybody's stomach around the Dodgers about how they got bumped from the playoffs. I mean, here they were riding high, 111 wins. This is historic. Look at their run differential. They're one of the greatest teams, whatever. And they went home and they went home fast. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't and now you're showing. sitting here. You don't have a third baseman. You don't have a shortstop. Okay, you might want to move Gavin Lux, who you've been holding on to this guy like he's Cal Ripken Jr., for God's <laughs> sakes. Uh, but okay, Gavin, let's see if the Gavin the Gavin Lux has had to age. How old is Gavin Lux now? Uh, and they've been in that because he's been around the big league club now for at least two years. I want to say he's three. still early 20s. Lux is 25 years old. He okay. just turned 25. Well, he better be he he better be it. Because uh, you've held on to this guy, and then now you, and now you need him to be this guy that you claimed you knew was going to be a superstar. You need him to be a superstar type player. You have lost. Think about what you have lost. You've lost your third baseman. You knew Turner was getting older, right? You lost your shortstop, who you drafted, you groomed, you brought up, but then you deemed wasn't worth the price. You let him go in free agency, which I do think was a good idea. So you don't have Seager. And then, the, and, then, and, and then you now have lost Turner, who you traded for, brought over from the Nats. So that's two shortstops now gone. You've lost Cody Bellinger, who you drafted and you brought up. He's now gone. Who are you bringing up? No, I said Bellinger. No, Bellinger. So you've lost Bellinger, Seager, Turner, um, two Turners, Trey Turner and mm -hmm. Justin Turner. And what are you falling back on? Gavin Lux and Max Muncy right now? Max Muncy has been terrible. Terrible. Well, luckily for them, they still have Betts and Freeman, but uh, they, they got to have some guys play somewhere else. Well, that's two guys. Yeah. And you got two guys. Yeah. They're out you got of, Smith, the catcher, who's still pretty good. Yeah. I mean, but you, got I mean four, you essentially have four guys you can think of, then include Lux. You got to find. But Lux hasn't done anything. Yeah, I have his numbers right here. Lux last year. In 421 at bats, 276, six homers, 42 RBI, and a 745 OPS. So you're now, you're now the Dodgers. You got the Padres, who, by the way, their owner has said, 
Uh, can't take money to the can't take money to the grave, I believe is what he said. And he's showing it. He's ready to spend. Now, the Giants, we thought I, I still I, I I'm glad to be here in San Diego. I think we're having a great time. We're getting a lot of coverage and we're getting a lot of stuff done. I am curious to what's being said back in the Bay Area. I am curious. Are, are, are they holding? I wonder, are the fans actually holding the Giants? Are they holding the Giants media? Are they hold? I mean, because he, here we are. Everybody's on right now, right? Here you got Brian Cashman's over here at the Yes Network. We've had three guests already. I'm looking over at the Giants media. Camera's still off. Nothing's going. They've hardly done anything that they've been here. I mean, what have the Giants done? What uh, what are the Giants? What's whoa. the Giants media? What's what 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 have they done? They what do you mean? They brought it, they got the Northern California guy they wanted, just not Aaron Judge. I mean, brought what have they Mitch been Hanniger. doing? And and, and are, is any uh, is Farhan, Larry Bear, are they gonna get held their feet to the fire? I mean, they're they they're big mouth and talking about how they were gonna, yeah, you know, we were not gonna get out bid. Well, you got out bid. You got out played. You got a bit by the Padres, not even the Yankees. It was the Padres were the old surprise one. And then where, where, where's all the Giants media who said their sources said he was going to sign with the Giants? Who are these sources? Who are these? I, I, I legitimately are. I mean, are the people in the Bay Area going to say, wait a minute, you guys started all tweeting out. You know, once again, Twitter can be great and Twitter can be evil because once you put it out there, it's out there. Where are all the sor- oh, sources are saying, yeah, we're hearing the same thing. Who are your sources? Who are your sources saying Aaron Judge was going to sign, leaning to signing for for um, the San Francisco Giants? Because it's now being reported that the only reason why he flew to San Diego wasn't a meet with you. He played you. He was he was he he flew to San Diego to meet with the Padres. So where 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 are these Giants insiders who were yesterday? Because remember they were firing up the cameras off to our left. They made a. They didn't even have an area. I mean, the Giants media didn't even have an actual area here in the media. They just created one, and they were going to act like they were going to have this big announcement about Judge. What? Where yeah? Where where's your sources? Where's all these great sources you said you had? I'm not buying. There were any sources. I'm not buying. Well, well. I mean, I love Susan Slusser, but what did she say? I I know an agent whose client is close with Aaron Judge, who says he's made a decision. And it appears he's made the decision for the Giants. Appears to make a decision. I mean, you either make a decision or you don't. It's not you appeared anything. And you know, wh- wh- where where is all this? Are, are we? Is are are they going to be held to to what was happening down here? You got paid to come out down here and cover this, and the best you got is it appears he's made a decision from 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 a client's from an agent's player who supposedly is good friends with Aaron Judge? that That's the sources we got? That's the best we got going? I mean, where's the insider from NBC Sports Bay Area? Where's where's all his sources, I mean, that they were talking about? I mean, it's just, it's absolutely ridiculous what's happened down here with the San Francisco Giants. I said there'd be egg on their face. I said it. He's not going to leave New York. And you went out there and you talked a big game. He didn't sign. And then, yes, just like the Albert Pujols thing, a mystery team got involved. Now, the mystery team uh, ended up not getting winning the prize. But, yeah, I'm going to rip the Giants, and I'm going to have fun doing it today. Uh, what is this now? The, how, I, I'm curious to see how it gets spun because every time we they lost out on free agency, it's, oh, well, we finished second. Yeah, you finished second on Harper. You finished second on Stanton. Apparently, you finished second on Otani. And now you finished – well, we don't know where you officially finished with Judge. You're in the top three because all I know teams. is he's not playing for San Francisco and the whole he's richer. He grew up a richer, really a fan. And uh, Steph Curry was whining and dining him and all that garbage. Yeah. Where are you at? Are you going to get Correa now? That's, uh, I believe, um, Alex Pavlovich had. Let me give you the exact I screenshotted it. Oh, yes, I, I, where's Alex Pavlovich's sources? It was right here. Uh, the next step for the Giants is this is from Twitter, Alex Pavlovich. The next step for the Giants is to dive into the shortstop market with Carlos Correa at the top of their list. They've been pushed hard for another starting pitcher in recent days and still want one more outfielder. Oh, we were wrong. So let's now pivot somewhere else. Oh, we were all wrong. I'm telling you right now, they were all running around here. 
like Aaron Judge was going to be a San Francisco Giant. Boy, they were all the Giants. The Giants machine was going nuts down here, and now they've all vanished. They, they've all pivoted. They've all pivoted. Uh, I don't think Did Cor- their sources pivot too? Who knows? I, I don't think Correa is the guy either. I think they're if they end up with shorts up, maybe Dansby Swanson. Who I if, I, I, I like Dansby. I think Dansby plays shortstop longer. He, he would actually kind of be like Brandon Crawford. He'll play shortstop longer than the rest of the guys. I just want to know where were all these sources that had Judge going to going to. I know that there was national people saying some stuff. I want to know where the local Bay Area people, their sources had Aaron Judge shining with the Giants. He was coming here, and we find out all the stuff they were saying was bogus, absolutely bogus. Whoever your sources are, turn them off. Dave Say, our friend from uh, the covers of Dodgers out in L.A., tweeted out, Kenley Jansen's market came down to Red Sox, Giants, and Blue Jays. So the Giants finished second on Jansen, too. <laughs> What's up, Jessica Kleinschmidt? What are you doing over there? Are you going to come on the show, or are you just going to – Stand there and and tweet and are your sources? What are your sources saying? Am I on? Yes, you are. Cool. Um, you have to remember when people say when what they're hearing in the lobby. A lot of it was speculation. No. Just saying. I and so that's where some of these sources come from. They're not necessarily sources. Yeah, because <laughs> and that's the thing I've noticed about this is my first winter meeting because I was told this your first my first one wow. and yeah so but it was interesting because they said be careful what you're hearing and I've used that to do as a reporter I'm hearing this I'm hearing that when I say I'm hearing it that means a source is telling me um, so for instance like the Sean Murphy stuff a source told me that the Cardinals wanted him of course but. He was too expensive on the return that they yeah. wanted for him. Um, the buzz, if you will, kind of means there's a lot of speculation around this. Um, and it's also the Giants. We know they're kind of the 27 dresses of teams, very much always the bridesmaid. And um, I think it unfortunately comes down to like taxes, which is crazy. It comes down to taxes. People don't want to move to California with the taxes. Thirteen point three percent. It's yeah. a lot. So if you're going to play, what people don't understand is, is if you play eighty-one home games with San Francisco, mm-hmm. you're going to play all the road games in L.A. and San Diego. They'll play against us. All of that means you're going to play well over a hundred games where you're taxed thirteen point three percent. Yeah. Versus when you play somewhere else. It was like when Pablo Sandoval left the Giants to go to Boston, Massachusetts has a flat 5% state tax. So the deal for Pablo netted him, I wanted to say it was like nine point something million. And I remember when people said, well, it's only nine million. You're like, hey, when you grew up in that kind of poverty that Pablo Sandoval grew up in, nine million dollars. I don't know about you. An extra nine million dollars seems like a lot of money. Yeah, absolutely. And. I remember um, an agent friend of mine was talking to one of his clients about a check and it was a check for $65,000, but he didn't get $65,000. He got a percentage because they took taxes out. He had to explain to his client, you know, why are you taking this amount of money from me? And this is not just a young player, but somebody from the Dominican who doesn't understand how everything in America works. And that's a huge thing. Imagine like seeing like my first California paycheck. I cried. I was like, where's the rest of it? Yeah. Where is the rest of this damn money? Welcome to California. Yeah, but that was interesting. Well, so. it, 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 and the thing too is, which no one wants to talk about, and I and I and I have said about Larry Bear and the San Francisco Giants, they've been brilliant for years. How they got their ballpark built, how they, you know, because when I first got into this business, the 49ers were the top dog, right? Mm-hmm. Warriors were dogs. They were. Oh, the Warriors were awful. Like Chris Cohan, that whole thing was. You a had mess. to pay people to go to games. So. The Giants did a great job of flipping the market, controlling the market, buying into NBC Sports Bay Area, controlling the newspaper, controlling the Chronicle, controlling the message. They've done a great job with that. And now you look at the way they're covered, and that's why I love pounding on it. Like, you guys were all sitting around as cheerleaders yesterday, and you said you're down the lobby. You're hearing things. You know, they didn't really have sources. They were great. They, they, they all just wanted it to happen. And the Giants right now, legitly, 
have an image problem. Mm -hmm. Their image is they won three World Series, but in between they didn't make the playoffs. And since then, they haven't been going to the playoffs. Uh, they went last year, 100, no, two years ago, 107 games, and of course lost. But right now they have an image like the Red Sox, and you deal with a lot of people uh, nationally. Giants and the Red Sox are very interesting. They're both successful. They both have a ton of money, but both of their fan bases look at them right now as they're cheap. Yeah. And you know, what was interesting is when they announced that Arson Judge was heading to the Giants, I saw Larry Bear and the GMP standing out in front, casually talking to members of the media, specifically Lindsay Adler, um, who's now at the Wall Street Journal, I believe, uh, or New York Times. Don't know. One of those. She's no longer with The Athletic. But the fact that this was announced and Larry Bear was casually just standing outside without anybody running to him, that was a big tell, you know. Um, and Pete was just, like, calm with his hands in his pockets, smiling. And I said, you know, for somebody who just like reached an agreement with Aaron Judge, you're very casual about this. So that's what was interesting. Not to mention the fact that the person who announced it was nowhere – John Heyman was nowhere around – that I, that I saw, especially not around Bear. So that was what was interesting. And, you know, I whatever you're going to say about sources, I feel like those were two of the main people that you would want to confirm with if you did get this info. They also both were not on their phones when this was occurring. So it was actually kind of a cool observant, like, moment for me, just kind of see how these, quote, things go down. Um, but I also know that watching that, just watching it from afar, and you have to trust who you're getting the news from as well. Yeah. Robert, Robert Murray, who you guys know, is a dear friend of mine showing up today. Yeah, if I he, think in the second part. Yeah, if he doesn't tweet it, I don't. I don't believe it. Wow. I. I but, and also watching him break news was quite wonderful. That was cool to watch. Well, I mean, the reality is, is, is I believe everything I read on Twitter and the internet. One hundred percent. That's kind of my. I problem. believe that was Abraham Lincoln who said that. Uh, believe everything you see on the internet. Or Twitter. Yeah. I mean, Abe, honest Abe, uh, said that a long would, time he ago. He would never set us astray. Most important thing for you was uh, you were around the old Scott Boris press conference, which they can go anyway. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's. I mean, I remember asking him about Matt Chapman, and next thing you know, he had baseball playing in China and the uh, the Far East. Yes, and, <laughs> you just you don't know where you can ask a simple question. Matt Chapman going to sign a contract? Next, thing you know, we're talking about China. Uh, what, what what happened yesterday with Scott Boris? First of all, he has his own backdrop now. Did you know that? No. Are you he, serious? He has a backdrop with a, with his logo that has a comb over on it, really leaning into it. But you're correct. You know, and I was actually talking to somebody from a member, a member of the media who said they're just kind of over it. Like, it was cute at first. His, like, really cool quotes and what he says is always kind of fun. But after a while, see, there it is. It's a B, uh, like the diamond, I'm assuming. And then that's a comb over. Wow. Yeah. But you're saying a comb over because he has a comb he has over. A comb like he leans into it. He leans into his comb over. But you over. think he really wanted to have the comb over? I'm bald, but I got some hair on the side and I'm throwing it over. And yeah. I'm putting I, that in my logo. Yeah. Because that's my thing. That's, yeah. Or it's just like too much of a coincidence. But yeah, I know. <laughs> but he does. He has. He has. Jessica Kleinschmidt with the best thing at the, at the winter meeting. <laughs> Morris's logo is a co-over. <laughs> oh, that is great. But it's interesting because. What an egomaniac. He's an agent. He has his own logo. He, ha he has his own oh meeting. His availability is its own part oh. of the schedule. And, you know, obviously, like, think about it. He represents every guy, every big name, in, like, in the industry. Um, but, you know, he just talks about. He says some of the weirdest things, like what it was that filet mignon and all this other stuff. And it's just, I talked to somebody that remember the meeting. He was just said, you know, I'm kind of just over it. It was cute at first. And not to mention the person I was talking to is part of the Reds media. So they don't really need to go to these Boris types of That's things. That's true. Yeah. But he just said, you know, it's just so interesting that we get a fun quote and it's cute at first. But now it's like, can you just tell us what, like, are you, what's the deal with Korea? What's the deal with these guys? Like what's going on type of a deal. But. It's always a show for sure. Yeah. And, and, and you wonder like, it's good for, it's good for the players. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously if you have him as an agent, he's going to be, uh, he's going to give it, he's going to get you top dollar. Yeah. Problem is he is so powerful. Like I look at that CBA 
And I, I, I'll be on record and I'll keep saying it. I don't think the baseball media understands much about business. Uh, the CBA to him, he doesn't care about players. He cares about free agents. Yeah. And when I look at that CBA and people said, well, look, the uh, the minimum went up a little bit. The owners knew going in they were going to have to sprinkle a little more money. Right. Mm -hmm. So they OK, we'll take the minimum up to 720 or whatever the hell it is. And we'll have a couple pools. We'll throw in 30 million here. And if you get voted rookie of the year, top three, we'll float you a little bit. All that was chump change to the owners. Yeah. And. Boris got them to be in. Boris actually didn't want that because he always wants more. But in the end, he wants to protect free agency because he wants to be able to keep taking these clients to free agency. He doesn't want a cap. Mm -hmm. He hates these luxury taxes. He hates all of this. And, and that's, you know, what would be best for baseball like it is for football and basketball and hockey would be an actually salary cap where you have a ceiling, you have a floor Everybody would make more money. The sport would be better. But guys like Boris will never allow that to happen because he wants bad contracts like Alex Rodriguez's contract. Not only once, but twice was mm -hmm. a disaster. I mean, most of these big free agent contracts are an absolute disaster. Some of the like the money is almost LOL at this point. I mean, we, I mean, just look Aaron Judge himself. Like he left, you know, the pot, the Padres wanted to give him four hundred million dollars. Are you kidding me? And it's just that's the type of money that's being thrown out there. And, you know, I think for Aaron Judge, he's more than just a ball player like he can. He, it's a community thing. It's a national thing. It's it's all of the, that stuff. But that amount of money is just ridiculous. And, and Jim Duquette, former general manager of multiple teams, sat right where you were at. Uh, what time was he here, Cody? Wow. Uh, the Duke the, came at 10. The Duke was in Duke, this chair. Duke was at 10. And but before he went on, he goes. The amount of money makes you nervous. Yeah. Like the, the this is, you know, we used to talk about generational wealth. When you're giving somebody 300 something million, this is this is kind of beyond, you know, you're kind of like as an owner, you almost want to go like, man, I, I, I rather I rather own the team and maybe have the player pay me. I mean, yeah. the amount of money you're starting to give these players is just they you can't really as a player live up to the money now. Mm -hmm. How was how Judge at 38, 39? I mean, we're seeing Miguel Cabrera crash yeah. and burn. We saw Albert Pujols crash and burn. Human beings, if we are not on something, we do not age well. We do not age better. I mean, I do, but I understand. You may. I, I, do. I, I haven't. I know <laughs> I am not. I can't do things that I was doing in my late 30s, early 40s. It's just the way it is. And yet. You're going to be paying. I mean, it's just it's real. It's stupid money. It's stupid business. This is bad business. And you know what I was thinking of is, you know, there's only 30 teams, really, obviously, that Aaron Judge was going to choose from. And obviously, it was there was a smaller number there, maybe five. And to the point where I'm like that amount of monetary value, you would almost has to have to invent a team for that. Like this, this, this team is going to take place on planet Pluto. And that's the only team that's going to be able to afford it because it's literally it's it's insanity. But we assumed it was and think about it for the future, too. If the next generation's Aaron Judge, it's going to be even more money than that. And you know, we're setting the precedence, which is good. You know, just me as like as a woman in the industry, you know what I know what I'm monetarily valued at. And I'm going to keep adding to that and add interest and all of that. So with him, just imagine that like he changed the game forever. Actually, Bryce Harper did. I mean, Mike Trout did just kept getting more and more and more and more. Imagine if Mike Trout waited. Imagine if he did hit free agency, what he would have been offered. And it still wouldn't have been this much. Yeah, it'd be because now that Mike Trout has been hurt yeah. and Mike Trout has played less games. And look what Cody Bellinger is going to do next season. You know, he wanted that one year deal because he wants to hit free agency when there is no Aaron Judge distractions around there. He's going to be seeking out a hopefully not too much of a similar, but he's going to know like how much everybody else is worth in that. Well, Bellinger market. better learn how to hit again. That's what I'm saying. I'm surprised he even got as much as he did I, for the, for the one year. I, this is this year for Cody Bellinger is a kind of a make or break because mm -hmm. he's at that age where this was the time to cash in. And if he still can't hit his weight and he doesn't weigh a lot mm -hmm. and he just every once in a while hits a home run, He'll never see a big contract. Yeah, the Dodgers were very much they didn't believe in him, right? They they let him go. And that's a that's very telling for a former NL MVP. And he was gonna kind of start the trajectory of all these guys, you know, him, Turner and or both Turners really. Um, so that was kind of 
that was that was tough to watch. And you're right, he's definitely not. There's that always that MVP curse, right? You're you're that well, or, it, or rookie it, of the year, it, especially. It's, it, it's 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 the old dodge the bullet. Mm-hmm. Think about it. Like people in in the Dodgers world wanted him to sign an extension years ago. Mm-hmm. Think about that. That this is this is the gamble on betting on human beings. Young player, super talented, so athletic, can play center field, but also play first base. Can be Gold Glove at, at either. And then all of a sudden, you're looking at a situation to where. Um, you're thanking God you didn't offer him an extension Mm -hmm. because you kicked him to the curb saying he's not worth anything. Yeah. And, you know, I was just thinking about the market overall. Like, how is this going to look from now on? I'm not just talking about the outfield market. And look at Trey Turner. He's, you know, and I've told you, talked to him about you, talked to you about him before. That's the the kind of player I would spend uh, all that money on. And he changed the outlook of it as well. I mean, Correa is going to be back out there. It's going to be interesting to see what he does and, that's the great Mark Ling right the there. The great Mark Ling. But he what? Today's your birthday? Yeah. You realize when Mark Ling walks by, everybody just, like, even the Yes Network goes, seriously. I've noticed that. That's that's called Big League. He's the best. Today's love, your birthday? Today's my birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you. What are you doing? Today's your special day. I'm spending time with you guys and Martin Gallegos. You're hanging out with a bunch of boring stiffs down the lobby at the winter meetings. You know what I was thinking of is... I would be bunch of middle-aged men yeah. looking at each other on cell phones. I was looking, you guys know, Jonathan Mayo. I was yeah. looking for him last night and I looked around the lobby and everybody looks like Jonathan Mayo. Everybody's like in a sweater. Yes. Everybody looks like their wife dressed them. Yes. Um, yeah. It's kind of uncomfortable. Like some people like work in the lobby. I'm not. Um, I did it last night for the first time and I never want to do it again. It's just a bunch of middle-aged men. I mean, honestly, just felt like I was working because that's, and demo. I know I'm a middle-aged man, but I don't want to hang out with a bunch of guys like me. I wouldn't want to hang out with a bunch of guys like you either. No, Tony. I'm I, I'm I'm I, here I, get against me out my will. Get, get me out of here. I'm not hanging out. And these guys, you, and you, it, okay, the winter meetings, I love it because it's all of us baseball dorks here in one in one place. Mm-hmm. But it really is the one place where baseball media people are stars. Oh gosh, yeah. Because the rest of the year. You're not a star. They're not anything. I was thinking about that too. Like um, if we weren't in this world um, and you bring maybe like all the other sports were involved, we'd be so much further down the totem pole. Joel Sherman wouldn't be like, everybody's like, oh my God, it's Joel Sherman. Uh, You go to the Super Bowl. I don't think anyone's going, oh my God, it's Joel Sherman. Oh my gosh. Is that Ken Rosenthal? And then you'd have to be like, (laughs) you'd have to be like, yeah, that's the Adam Schefter of MLB. And then then they'd be like, oh, okay. (laughs) Is that Brian Kinney? Uh, yeah. I don't think they're doing that at the Super Bowl. No, but I will say it's actually really, I looked up and like Jose Batista was there. I was talking to Clint Hurdle, who's a good friend of mine. I had to drop that for Cody. And Nelly, Nelson Cruz walked up. Nelly Cruz was here yesterday. Nelly Cruz, he was wearing like a Burberry sweater, GM of the Dominican team. He's still looking to play, which is interesting. Um, we saw Jed Lowry, him and Dave Stewart were chatting it up. And so it's been Amazing. Oh, our, these are our, my, our, that's my family. Our, our that. A's brethren is walking by as we speak. My two work wives and then Greg. And then Greg. <laughs> and then Greg. <laughs> and then there's Greg. Well, we've made a couple signings. We got some verse. We got some verse to Martin Gallegos. will break it down for us next. I will say, and actually Martin did tweet this out. That means obviously we're probably not going to see Chad Pinder next season, which we were kind of prepared for. Um, no more Rihanna. No more Rihanna. Maybe maybe Tony Kemp will bring it back because Tony Kemp loves to make people cry. I made Stephen Vogt cry how many times last season? Three three times. Three times in one press conference. Twice in the next pre- the, his, his goodbye press conference. It would have Mar- been more impressive if you would have made Boris cry with the comb over for his logo. Yeah. <laughs> Did you ever notice the the comb over on Boris's? They didn't know he has Boris has his own backdrop now. Yeah. I, it's it's so ridiculous. I love it though. Yeah, I I'm mean, glad I got to share that with yeah, you. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, you, you actually made my day. Thank you. You made my day. You made mine. Uh, Tony. It's your birthday. Get out of here. Okay. Well, I'm gonna get a mimosa. Yeah, go have some cocktails. I'm gonna it's, have a mimosa. It's 11 o'clock. You're in San Diego. I think I'm done with stuff today too. You so. should go and in, today's your, when you leaving tomorrow. Oh, today's let you know what yeah. when I'm done. Text me and let me buy you a birthday drink. Oh, I would love that. Before I get out of here. That's amazing. You're leaving today? Yeah, tonight. 
There's Laura Britt. Uh, Laura Britt, she guaranteed Aaron Judge to the Giants. She guaranteed. My sources wow, say. Wow, she's walking away so fast. My sources. We had our so sources. Fast. We had our sources. It was cool to see Alex Pavlovich um, go on MLB Network to say, well, we tried. <laughs> We said, I mean, I mean, Britt, I, I, she, she had me as she, she told me for sure Aaron Judge was coming to town. She told me too. She said if Aaron Judge they is not on the Giants, him. I think she actually offered. Do we have another headset for? Her? She offered her firstborn children to me. And she has three, right? Well, she, well her firstborn. I get Marshall. Okay. <laughs> I mean, we, we, I mean, she actually, you know, the big thing for her was that she got to come here and not have family and she gets to sleep in and have yes. a, and have a regular life again. Yeah. And then they were panicking because her and Brody are here and they got nobody to do sharks. Yeah. You guys are uh, spitting some trash right we now. We are. We are. You were spitting trash. And she's the one person in the world I would never want to upset. <laughs> Everybody else I couldn't care less about. Mo more importantly, how, how sleeping has been. Oh, sleeping's been great, yes. actually. Although at winter meetings, there is a lack of that. Yeah. A lack of sleep that you get. But it's still better than... Kids. Sleep with three kids. Yeah. 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 I so keep scheduling things for eight o'clock in the morning, like I like on purpose. Like I don't know why I'm doing that. Like, yeah, I'll meet up with you at eight. Yeah, I'm definitely not doing that. Yeah, I don't I just don't think. Mm -hmm. And then I'm in bed at like two. I'm like, yeah, that was dumb. I gotta tell you, it, the, being no 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 wife, no kids, waking up. Doing, hey, I'm going to roll down. It, it's nice. Yeah. Toughest thing you have is a manager's breakfast. You're doing pretty good in life. Yes. Things are good. Um, yeah. Yesterday, I remember everybody had Judge going to the Giants. And then now we're here in Padres. Just as somebody who covers the Giants, I know there's supreme disappointment with the fan base. I thought they kind of brought that on themselves when they said that, hey, no, we're not going to be outbid. Now you look at the Padres were in on it. He signs with the Yankees. Just, just it's got to be a little deflating for Giants fans. Absolutely. I, I think if you say otherwise, that'd be a lie. He's the biggest free agent in years for Major League Baseball as a whole. I, I don't think that – I do think the Giants – I mean, the Giants were in. They were obviously very in on those discussions. And I think it, it, there was so much – on today's Wednesday, on Tuesday, yeah. Yeah. just hypes. <laughs> what day of the week is yeah. it? That's the yeah. story of my life. That is winter meetings <laughs> yeah. for sure. That's just my life in general. Yes. Um, but there, yeah, there was a ton of buzz. And I think when you have reports that go out and, and that creates a, a lot of hype and drama and, you know, it, it takes it from zero to, to a hundred mm -hmm. really quickly. So yeah, the fan base got in on that and jumped in on that. There's disappointment. I think, you know, I was asked a few weeks ago, if they don't get judge, is there anybody that can, you know, smooth things over? And not that there aren't other talented, really great high name players that could do great things for the giants, but it's Aaron judge. Yeah. You, you can't, there's not another name that's at that level right now. Obviously the, the money backs that mm -hmm. up, the name backs that up, what he did last year backs that up. So yeah, it's going to, it's going to take winning. It's going to take some good moves this off season, some, you know, bringing in some players and then it's just going to be a wait and see. That's going to be a, a come to the season in 23, get halfway through this thing and see how the team is. I think One of your partners is the greatest guy. And I can't wait to when I got to come in and do A's that I can't wait to bust his chops a little bit. And that is the great Rich Aurelia. <laughs> and I'm going to be like, Richie, you couldn't land him. I mean, yeah. What's the deal? Red, Richie? Sti red stitch wine. You couldn't throw in a couple cases of wine to bring him in. I mean, what happened, Richie? Yeah. Come on, Rich. Well, especially in his own hometown too. And I know obviously they signed Mitch Hanniger, who I'm a big Hanniger fan. Don't get me wrong. But even after that, um, despite him being underappreciated, they were still vying for Aaron judge. So it wasn't like, Signing yeah, that Mitch. wasn't off the table. Yeah, Absolutely. It's like, you know, Hanniger, okay, we're done. Nope, they're still going to go for it. But, you know, I'm a huge Hanniger fan. You know, a right-handed hitter has not hit a splash home run in McCovey Cove ever. Yeah. I thought Piazza did it. Mm -mm. People said that, but did not happen. And then I, before Mitch Hanniger got signed, I said, I think it's going to be Mitch Hanniger. And then they signed him. Well, th there is, and I've lumped the Giants with the Red Sox. These are two franchises that they can look not too long ago winning World Series. And now they're both perceived as cheap. And I think that's an image right now. The Giants have been fighting, right, in our network. In, 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 in you know, the, my friends who are Giants fans, season ticket holders, they want some stardom. You know, with yep. Buster being gone, they remember Bonds got the ballpark built. I mean, that's what they want. 
And it's like, okay, now Correa is out there. Is that really what you want? So, but there has to be a pivot, but it's, it's almost like before we all get out of here, Giants fans would like to see something. Yeah, I agree. I do think that you have to be, you know, the fans say spend, spend, spend. When you listen to Farhan, I get that, that the track record is not always that he's the biggest spender. They are smart with their money. And I, they had a big offer reportedly out there for Aaron Judge. So it's not that they weren't trying to spend. Bryce Harper a few years mm-hmm. ago, they're willing to spend. So I think that that's a positive sign. But you don't want them to spend to spend. You don't want to put a guy in the, what's the money machine where the money's flying all around? <laughs> and he's like, they can't grab any of it. <laughs> now, if you put me in there, sure, spend all the money yeah, you want. Yeah. But, you know, you don't want them to, you want a, a front office that's going to spend wisely. So I would just say to the fans that, you know, get a little crazy saying they're not spending the money. They're trying to be smart about it. And I get that you want you want the big names and they do need a a big time star. There's no doubt about that. But you've got to pick and choose who it is. And those opportunities don't come come around all the time. So that's I think that's part of why the Aaron Judge disappointment is so great for fans, because it was there and it seemed to have all the makings. And it happened again. A lot of the the bridesmaids yes. stuff. I wonder if there's one pattern, if they're all, if it is the taxes, if it is something across the board, like why we didn't get, why the Giants didn't get John Carlo, why then they didn't get Aaron Judge, why didn't they get some of these? They big haven't names, landed Bryce a free agent since Barry Bonds. Yeah, and I, there's, I wonder if there's something there. And where were you two in the early nineties? Well, there. <laughs> I had a metabolism. Elementary I had a metabolism. Were you, were you guys? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Were you, we were sleeping I in. in the, I was in the lunchroom. We were in the lunchroom. Were you guys in born Alabama. in the early 90s? Yes, come on. I'm an 80s girl. We are so are young. You? Yeah. I am 86. too. 86. I'm 88. So we're we're old You're old youngins. We are. You're young. We are. Young and beautiful. Today's yes. your birthday. Today right. is your birthday. That's right. We were talked about this. Yes. We celebrated the other night. Yes. So that's why I forgot because I thought her birthday was the other day. Do but you it ha- is today. Happy she, birthday. She Thank needs you. a mimosa partner right now. Do you have to work? <laughs> well, I do have to do some hits for NBC Sports. Bang Bay it Area. out. By noon, you're ready to rock. <laughs> I got to catch a flight at some point. I've had to change. So we changed our flights yesterday. Thinking the news is the getting things we, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. I think we Pat, heard all about it at dinner. Yeah, what Pabst you guys was doing. expecting to leave early. If, I if haven't given the A's fans all that because we were with the great Brody Brazil last night. We're still trying to figure out who's doing Sharks tonight. Oh, oh Carlos is going to do Sharks tonight. Oh. Carlos is. So I was Big supposed hockey to, guy. I There's Pabst right to fly now. back. <laughs> but now they thought they thought that would be too much uh, scheduling night nightmare for me so i gotta think all the hockey you did on telemundo will really pay off tonight (laughs) we'll see (laughs) we'll see he'll be great carlos is gonna be we're not rushing brody back to the bay area no no he's going back today though i think i last night we we did we was drinking wine last night so we don't know we don't know we don't where where in the world is brody brazil exactly let's find him and the sharks are like please come back uh what do you got when can we see you on television today Today, this will be on our Warriors pre and post. We're doing Alex Pavlovich, our Giants insider, and I are going to do some hits just on the uh, very non exciting They're going to have news. very solemn music it's in well, the background. Well, you got to get me. You're going to pour one out yeah. for Aaron Jones. So that'll be on, on Warriors pre and post tonight. Yeah, because that's not till later. I mean, Correa could come down the pipe. I mean, well, time. Are, you Xander to, Bogarts. are you trying to keep me from getting my flight? That's what, what you're trying to your do flight? right now. I think it's at 3. Oh, you may want to push that back. No, I'm not pushing it you back. You may again. want to push that back. Also, KNTV. We'll have a little oh, hit there you for the newscast for KNTV. Dansby too. Swanson, a San Francisco Giant, live at. Why do you like from, to say stuff from like the that? Airport. I'll be live from the airport from my phone. Behind me here at Southwest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll give you all the details. Uh, hey, this is fun. Thanks yeah. for having me on. Yeah, Verlander, I think, signed when I was in the air, which was just selfish. I couldn't do anything. I had to just watch it happen. Because God knows it's all about you. You know that. It's your birthday. I don't, I mean. That today that is today. all about yeah, Today so, is your day. Uh, well, Aaron Judge took that away from and me. At, oh, at four, it, it was like, what are you doing? Yeah. At four, no feel. At four o'clock, I will buy you a drink. Thank you. For your birthday. I appreciate Martin that. Martin Gallegos next right here on A's Cast Live. Oakland Athletics spring training is right around the corner and you can be part of the excitement. Get your tickets now and plan ahead for a fun-filled trip to Mesa, Arizona this spring. Pack the sunscreen, bring your friends, pick up some ballpark classics and watch your green and gold get ready for the regular season. Get your tickets today to see the Athletics take on the Giants, Padres, Cubs, Dodgers and more. Tickets are on sale now at athletics.com spring. That's athletics.com spring. 
The Coliseum has gone by many names, but none better than The Last Dive Bar. Hi, everyone. Ken Korak here, and my friends at Last Dive Bar are helping us celebrate our longtime home. Last Dive Bar has the most unique merchandise for all Oakland baseball fans. T-shirts, sweatshirts, the Ray Fossey line, and my personal favorite, the lights have taken full effect. Visit their website at lastdivebar.com or follow them on social media at Last Dive Bar. All proceeds are invested back into the A's Community Fund and their affiliated charities. Go to lastdivebar.com. That's Last Dive Bar. Humanity has accomplished a whole lot so far. We created penicillin, the automobile, and the internet. Not to mention drones, duct tape, and the hot dog. It's all thanks to the power of human connections. And Ring Central's here to make that even easier, more seamlessly and securely, on a platform built to grow your business. Say hello to a whole new way to say hello. Visit ringcentral.com and say hello to possibilities. Ring Central. Message. Video phone together. Martin Gallegos of MLB.com stopped by A's Cast Live and laid out the plan to build the next core of players for the A's. In terms of getting more competitive towards next year, um, you hope that you know some of these guys who got called up this year, like Shea Langoliers, Nick Allen, uh, Jordan Diaz, some of these guys, you know, take that next step next year, have their full year under their belt. And, and along with, you know, uh, other guys like Tyler, Tyler Soderstrom and Zach Geloff finished the year at AAA, you hope that those guys can come up at some point, whether it's, you know, the second half and kind of start, you know, building something here, you know, a group of, a core group of guys like we saw, you know, a few years back with Chapman, Olsen, Pinder, all these guys who came up, see these guys, you know, who have won together in the minors kind of start to mesh at the big league level. And, and if you can kind of develop that core next year, I think that's what it's all about for next year, you know, taking a step forward being more competitive, winning more games in this year. But more importantly, I think finding that core core group of players, core group of young guys, you know, out of those prospects that you have down there and, and hope that some of them evolve into, you know, players who you can count on for the next few years to lead that next, you know, playoff group here in Oakland. To listen to the full interview and much more, go to athletics.com slash A's cast. Coming in at five foot three inches, it's number one mom. She switched to Xfinity and got the all new three for one bundle. Unlimited internet, streaming, and Xfinity mobile. All for what you could pay wireless companies for just one 5G unlimited line. Boom shakalaka. Go to Xfinity.com slash three for one. Call 1-800-XFINITY or visit an Xfinity store today. Limited time offer, restrictions apply. Xfinity mobile requires post pay Xfinity internet. After 24 months, regular rates apply to all services and devices. A's fans, there is no better way to stay in touch with the A's and even our players than following us on social media. Just head over to athletics.com slash social. That's athletics.com slash social for a full list of our social coverage from player accounts to Twitter handles and more. Now is the time to stay in touch. Head over to athletics.com slash social. That's athletics.com slash social today. The Oakland Athletics begin spring training on February 25th. Now's the time to make plans to catch us in Mesa, Arizona, and enjoy the sunshine of your family and friends. Buy your tickets early for the best seats at the lowest prices as your green and gold take on the Giants, Dodgers, Padres, Angels, and more at Ojo Cam Stadium. And Tony, it's a deep drive to right in the corner. Gritchick going back. He'll turn and watch it fly. Get your tickets at athletics.com slash spring. That's athletics.com slash spring. A's Cast Live continues from the town. Here's Chris Townsend. All righty, from the winter meetings. We're going to go till noon. Martin Gallegos is with us. We'll go till noon. Then we're going to take a two hour break where we will speak with Bob Melvin. It's going to stop by here. Just confirm Padres PR said they'll bring him over when he's done with his uh, availability. So Bob Melvin will stop by and then uh, we'll take it from two to four o'clock and wrap it up and to see, I mean, I, I got to think at some point we're going to hear some type of news of one of the short stops. I mean, cause some teams, they don't want to leave here without some news. Cause the reality is it's business, right? You make a big signing, help season tickets, 
sell merch for Christmas, get everybody excited, right? Because once you get into Christmas and the New Year's, everybody's not thinking about it until spring training. So you like to make news now. For sure, especially if, if you're a team that was in on Aaron Judge and didn't sign him. So Yeah, it is a, like a big – like you could tell – we can tell from our Giants fans. It's like, oh, yeah, they're pretty bummed. Yeah, for sure. I mean, everyone went to sleep. I mean, I went to sleep last night. I don't know what was going to go, what was going to happen. Then you wake up this morning and you see the reports. So it was, it was I mean, especially, I mean, if you're a Giants fan, it's, it's got to be brutal, especially when you saw the Heyman chain of tweets with the, he did sign Arson Judge, Aaron Judge, and then, yeah, and then taking it back. So whirlwind of emotions for sure. All right. So what do you think? So Diaz signs with the A's, more versatility. Uh, Peterson, what, 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 what do you see? Yeah, I mean, we've we've always known the A's to be teams that you know really place an enormous value on guys who are versatile, guys who are utility guys, and there's two guys right there. Jason Peterson can play all around. I let him as DS as well. So I mean, it fits the mold of, of guys that the A's go after. So um, you know, it's it's nice to see them making some moves. You know, I mean, they're 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 active, and it seems like they're they're still trying to add add some guys. You know, David Force told us when we we start out, David was our Ricky Anderson. He let off the meetings. He let off all this coverage and said. We have contracts out there right now. We have offers out there. And I know people are like, "Uh uh-huh. They're not lying. They had offers out there. They're looking. They're not spending big money, but they're spending money. They're trying to get better. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I I mean, I heard, you know, Jose Quintana just signed. I heard they were in on him before he signed with the Mets. So it sounds like they could be looking for maybe a maybe a more veteran type starting pitcher to add here. So, um, you know, they're going to go out there. I mean, they need to they need to field a team, right? They need to bring in guys. Uh, major leaguers who are who are proven guys who they can count on. So um, I wouldn't be surprised to see them make you know a few more moves here. And the Rule Five coming up, they'll probably pick a guy there too. I think David Force, the general manager of the A's, has just uh, entered the room as uh, feeling pretty confident after, and he got Chad Smith, a reliever. What'd you think about that move? Chris Well was the second round pick out of Michigan. We liked him just because he'd come on the show before and uh, when he was drafted. But what did you think about that move? Yeah, it was an interesting one. I mean, to, to move a prospect away, you know, I think he was ranked their number 18 prospect. They, so it tells you something about what they feel about Chad Smith. He's a guy who they feel can fit into their bullpen. They had some guys that merged last year, uh, you know, who could throw hard. Chad Smith, a little bit different mold, more of a sinker slider type guy. So I'm sure it was fit in somewhere in the middle innings for Mark Kotze. But again, a guy who has some major league experience. I think they want to... They're looking for guys who have major that major league experience and guys who they can count on for for a whole season. And Wilson Contreras, who was one of the most interesting guy, is going to get traded at the deadline. Takes the Cubs for Cody. This was a major deal. Took the Cubs off of his was it Instagram is what he took the Cubs off his Instagram and yeah. and off of his profiles. Yeah, said goodbye to everybody. Right. Yeah. He said goodbye. He did the wave to the fans and, and didn't get traded. He said goodbye. But he didn't get traded and then stays with the Cubs. Now signs with the rival Cardinals to most A's fans. You're going to be like, whatever, maybe affects my fantasy or. Uh, but that's a big deal, but also a big deal in A's lands because Sean Murphy has not been dealt. This is one of the places he was going to go. And I don't think Sean Murphy's going to get dealt anytime soon because we just watched our general manager <laughs> walking that way, which means he's probably going on MLB Network right now. Yeah, I, mean, I think, you know, we came into the winter meetings. It, there was a strong feeling that it seemed like maybe Sean Murphy would get traded before this thing was over. But I think as each day goes by and, and you, you don't, you know, the, the rumors kind of start to, you know, dwindle a little bit. I think there's a better chance that the A's start out with, with the regular season with Sean Murphy and, and Shea Langley behind the plate. And, I mean, look, they have the leverage here. They don't have to trade him. I mean, no. he's, he's under control through 2025. He's cheap. He's a great player. I mean, if you want to wait until the trade deadline or beyond, they have no problems doing that. They, they want to get what they feel is, you know, worthy package for, for a player like Sean Murphy. And for these other teams, we keep trying to say to people, it's easier just to spend. It's easier to buy a catcher on free agency. Then you trade for Murphy because, A, you're going to have to give up a bunch for him. And you're still, even though people say, well, he's under team control. At some point, you're going to have to pay for him. You're going to have to spend for him, and you're going to have to spend that collateral. Uh, It's just easier to go out and get Wilson Contreras. And now that market for a catcher is down to, I don't know, Rays, Cubs. Maybe Cleveland. Cleveland's still out there. Uh, maybe Houston, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think you obviously still got to wait to see, you know, where guys on the free agent market sign too. There's still guys like Christian Vasquez out there. Um, so, I mean, the more, the like the longer it's gone on, I, I get the feeling that he's going to stick around. I mean, you know, maybe something happens here in the next couple of days, but um, it certainly feels right now at this point, like 
Sean Murphy will be in an A's uniform come spring training. Well, what else do you think about uh, what else do you think about what the A's potentially could do here? Well, I, I, I wanted I, selfishly. I was thinking Cody Bellinger sounds like an Oakland ARA. Yeah. I mean, Joey Gallo still out there. That's a possibility. Yeah. Um, you know, I think they've made some moves here again. Like I said, the Rule Five. I think they're definitely going to pick a position player in that in that uh, draft. And and I mean, who knows? It's obviously. I mean, you never know what you're going to get with that. Most times, guys don't end up sticking with the team, but for a team like the A's that's rebuilding and, and needs pieces, I think there's certainly a better chance of, of finding a guy there who maybe sticks around the whole year. Um, but as you go through the, through the off season, I mean, you know, we've seen the A's in the past. Uh, they'll, they'll stick around a little bit, go into January, February. There'll be some guys on the market who maybe you didn't expect to be there. Maybe they pounce on some of those guys. Um, maybe short one-year deals, try to try to try guys trying to rebuild their value. Um, so, you know, they'll, they'll add pieces to the major league roster. I think obviously offense is a big part of it. They, their offense was bad last year, so they need to find some pieces there, but they're also going to try to add some pitching. And I think they're interested in some veteran arms. And I mean, I, I think they're going to sign at least one veteran starting pitcher here uh, at some point. You can tell 102 losses didn't sit well, and they do not. I, they're, they're, this is not going to be a year where the A's are in a situation where they're going for the AL West. But they definitely do not want to go through what they went through last year. Yeah, no, you got to take a, a step forward, you know, in 2023 for sure. You can't go through two, you know, horrendous years like that. I know, you know, inside the clubhouse, you know, they, they tried to stay positive and they were competitive throughout the year. They never laid down, but you got to see some progress here in year two with this, this rebuild process and, you know, hope to see, you know, some semblance of improvement on the field, uh, you know, with the results battle. Maybe you get close to five, 500. Um, and then once you get to 2024, maybe you get some of these top prospects up like Soderstrom and Geloff. Maybe a couple of those guys make a make a cameo in 2023. And then you kind of build hope for for the next season after that, that. Maybe that's the year that you maybe find yourself back competing with some of these other teams in the AL West. It's a tough division, and it seems like it's only getting tougher. I mean, they're, they're, every team, it seems like, is adding big names. I got a feeling, though, we may see a little more of a cameo for some of these guys. They're going to push their way, and it's going to be time to say, let him, you know, we're talking to Billy Owens earlier today, assistant general manager of the athletics. And, you know, talking about some of these guys that it's, it might just be their time. We'll see how their spring spring training, you know, spring is different for a lot of different people, right? Some guys go there just to get game ready, get in shape, be ready to play the season. Some people are there to earn a job and some of the young guys work their way to the big league. So how some of our young guys perform in spring training may force the front office's hand. For sure. I mean, there's not a lot of you look at the roster as it currently stands. I mean, you project what's who's coming into spring training. There's not a lot of, you know, secured spots. Right. Like, I mean, Nick Allen's going to be your shortstop. Right. Uh, you know, behind the plate, you feel like you're kind of set there. But I mean, outfield, infield, it's all kind of up for grabs. I mean, if, if, a, if a prospect comes in and impresses, I mean, why not? Why not give him a shot to, to start the year? And, you know, obviously you look at guys like I mentioned Soderstrom and Geloff as guys. But I mean, there's also guys. Down the list, guys like Lawrence Butler, who they protected, Denzel Clark. These guys, if they perform, I mean, they could come up quick. I mean, there's 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 nobody really blocking them at the major league level at this point. What do you expect from starting pitching? Do you think there's more names coming in? Do you think they're because obviously the 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 Caprellian news is here we go again. Yeah, that's that's a tough one. That was that one was kind of dropped on us on the first day here. Um, so I mean, it sounds like he a good chance he's not going to be ready for the rotation to start the year. Um, so, I mean, you've got really Cole Irvin and maybe Paul Blackburn if he's healthy again. And then some guys who came up last year, like Walter Chuck Sears, yeah. you know, Martinez, these guys were, were solid, but they're still relatively unproven. So I think for sure, you're going to see at least one veteran starting pitcher, um, come in, whether it's, you know, on a minor league deal, or maybe a guy on a one or two year deal here, maybe a guy who's trying to, you know, rebuild some value a little bit here, um, or a veteran arm who's just been around a block a little bit. They're definitely going to go out and find insurance. I think, you know, this team always, you know, there's never too much pitching depth for a team, and especially for a team in the A situation where the, the, the options that are there that are going to be there in spring training, there's not a lot of experience there. Well, I, and I and I think about, you know, if, if you, I mean, Cole Irvin has proven the last two years that, you know, this is a guy that's going to give you innings, and Paul Blackburn had a freak thing with his finger. I mean, I was an all-star last year. You think you can have him back and you can get 25 plus starts. You add one more guy. And then now you can float all these other like Waldachuk and Sears and all these yeah. guys. I mean, you're gonna 
we all know you're going to need more than seven. We think anywhere from 10 to 13, whatever. But the A's do have a bunch, bunch of arms. But to get one more guy that you think you can rely on for innings would be huge. Exactly. You need you need a guy who can, like you said, eat innings. Guy, a guy who you know can go out there and give you 20, 25 starts. And, you know, you don't got to worry too much about them possibly getting injured. Anything surprised you since you've been down here that you've been hearing? Uh, I don't know. It's it's different. I feel like it's a lot more, you know, we didn't have the winter meetings the last two years. Obviously, the last one was 2019. It feels like there's a lot more intensity, like there's a lot more uh, talks. I don't, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's just because we haven't been here in so long. That it seems like talks are going on. But I don't know if anything that's necessarily surprised me. I think we were all kind of wondering what was going to happen with the judge thing. And shortly after that, it seems like the move started to trickle on down. So um, the judge stuff was crazy. I mean, I'll forever remember where I was in my hotel room when John Heyman sent out the arson judge tweet. That was, that was legendary right there. <laughs> well, you know what? It, 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 it was, it was, it was a tweet that so many people were waiting just to hear it, you know, and it's that whole thing that, you know what? People got what they wanted to hear. So they ran with it. Yeah. Instead of like waiting for multiple sources, multiple, what did they do? They, they, they got what they wanted. So they ran with it and then they got, they got burned by it. Yeah. Yeah, no, that was that was a harsh lesson in this in this business for sure. Well, thank you for coming on, my friend. And uh, next time we'll talk to you. Who knows? Could be before Christmas, after Christmas. We'll see who else the A's are going to sign. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm sure it's going to be active. So, so we'll we'll talk soon. I'm sure. And if not, have a good holiday. Thanks, Tony. You too, man. Bingo. Coming up next, we got my man. Who, if, if you don't know. Uh, Moses does a lot for this show and you hear his name, uh, Moses Messina, who joins us from MLB network. You hear his name all the time, whether it's mad dog, he gets mentioned. He's one of the top guys (laughs) at MLB network who helps us so much here on A's cast live and A's cast. And also what we do on the broadcast. How are you? Good, good. I'm glad to be on. Glad to finally meet you in the flesh. Yeah. I got you, got you to mosey on over from your guys, big stage <laughs> yeah, over there. Yeah. It's, it's been pretty hectic today, especially this morning. We all got a call pretty much to get ready and get on air about five 30 this morning with all the Aaron judge stuff, but it's been, it's been fun. What is that like when you've got all your talent here, you got the stage, you have the ability to go live? Obviously, if a guy's signing with another team, maybe not the same deal, but when he's signing with the New York Yankees, when all the rumors of the Giants, now the Padres right. came in, right. just take us through what that's like. Like, let's get the machine fired up and let's so, go. So, like, for instance, I got here on Sunday and I was on breaking news duty on Sunday night and we got word that, you know, the Verlander deal could be, um, coming close. So we would check with our sources, like whether it's John Paul Morosi, um, Joel Sherman, John Heyman, guys like that. And they'll say, hey, this is close. So this may happen. Once we get word that, hey, there's a confirmation that the deal's getting done, we first put it on our bottom line at uh, MLB Network, and then we get our ducks in a row, whether like, all right, which set do we fire up first, which talent's available. We have some talent that's signed for breaking news. This morning, Hot Stove is our first show, so it's a matter of speaking. They are usually had their meeting at 6.30 in the morning. So since that deal broke at 5.30, they just got right up, skipped the meeting, just got his makeup and ready to <laughs> go on set as soon as possible. <laughs> that's, that's how it works. Yeah. It, it, it's the machine. That's, that's very impressive. And you've been with the network a long time. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I've been there for 13 years, started there as a researcher, then made my way to associate producer, segment producer, and now been full-time producer since 2019. So what is it like when you know, for years when we were growing up, we mm. all just watched Sports Center yeah. and they kind of gave us like a, mm. a magazine of sports. And then yeah. all of a sudden we get NFL Network. Right. Then we get MLB Network right. and then hockey and everybody right. in NBA is following mm. along. Uh, what is it like when you got one sport mm. and your job is to do it better than anybody else? I mean, the sport the the network's put on by the actual game, right. MLB. Right. What is that like when it's like this is what we do and we do it better than anybody well, else? Well, that means every 
big story we hit harder than anyone else. We'll hit the Aaron Judge story. Like for Sports Center, for instance, they'll they did a four minute segment this morning on Aaron Judge, but their main thing is basketball and football. So they hit it a little shorter. For us, an Aaron Judge story would be our A block, our B block, our C block. Maybe we take a break in the D block, but the E block and the F block, we still talk judge. So we hit every story from an Aaron Judge signing to, you know, um, a Ledman's Diaz signing. You know, we'll hit that and establish every angle because we do have a responsibility of all 30 teams. We don't have the responsibilities of, with ESPN. They can kind of focus on the Mets, Yankees, Dodgers, Red Sox, Angels, things like that. We care about all 30 teams. So a good example is the Lindor trade a few years ago. You know, it's a big deal for the Mets that they got Francisco Lindor, but we made sure to attack the other angle on what are the Cleveland Indians getting? What prospects are they getting? What should they expect? So we have to cater to every fan base. When well, we ever... what did you guys say about Diaz signing with the A's? It's good. You know, the A's are always that team that has those little sneaky signings where you're like, oh, well, let me see Diaz for two years, really? And then all of a sudden you look up, he's having, he'll have a great year. Then all of a sudden he'll come up and trade talks or things like that and the A's can flip him for another prospect or things like that. Uh, you know, the A's for a while, except for last year, like when I remember looking this up when we were previewing the AL West a couple of weeks ago, like this was the A's first losing season in a while. So the A's are kind of that team that always seems to pull it together, like what, like, out of nowhere and they just start getting rolling and then all of a sudden they're in contention and then it can stay in contention because there is the feeling at least from us is like the A's are that team that always has a chip on the shoulder. Anyone who's on the A's, they know the setup is not glamorous. They're always bet against, but then they play hard. They're always tough to play in that ballpark. You know, you guys swept the Astros last year yeah. a couple of times. You beat up DeGrom last year in a start. Like, it's still a tough, scrappy team. It's not a team you can go in and say, oh, we're going to beat up the A's for three games. No, they'll give you a fight for a whole series. Well, one of the one of the cool things about having you on today is, is knowing your fandom yes. and your New York Mets. Yes. And yes. it's kind of like an old guy for an old guy. Yeah. DeGrom, you know, the, the thing is, DeGrom was your guy, and you yeah. babied him so much, yeah. and, then, and then now he's gone. Right. And, but then you bring in Verlander. Right. How right. are you feeling? Uh, I think I'm feeling – I think everyone's asked me, like, how am I feeling? And the, I'm kind of on the air, air of, like, okay. Because you're right. DeGrom's our guy. That's the guy that, you know – came up through our system, won the Cy Young Awards. You're right, we babied him, made sure he was right on track, right on target. But I think he soured a little bit um, with the with the Mets for some reason or another and didn't want to be there. He didn't give the Mets the last right of refusal. Isn't like, that crazy? Yeah, I mean, you. I feel like, you know, some people say it was good for the Mets that – they didn't come back to him because I feel like the pressure, kind of like the way the Yankees did. With Uncle Steve would have ate. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, Steve would have said, all right, you got 5 for 185 for the Rangers. We'll go 5-190 or 5-200 or something like that. So I think he knew he didn't want to be there and he didn't want to give the Mets a chance to match because he might have been afraid the Mets would match and then he'd have to make the decision of coming back to a place he didn't want to play. I don't know why he didn't want to play. I don't know why he decided to go to Texas, but, you know, he did what was best for his family and things like that. But it is an old rotation. We just ran a graphic on the end of high heat that there have been like five teams ever that got 100 or more starts from four guys 34 years or older in their rotation. And the Mets right now will have their top four starters, Verlander, Scherzer, uh, Carrasco, and Quintana, 34 years or older in their rotation next year. So you're, hope, you're asking for a lot for those guys to make 30 starts. Will they make – I doubt they'll make 30 starts. Can they make 25 starts? That's the hope. If you get 100 starts out of those four guys, the Mets should be in contention for a division or a pennant. But if any of those guys falter, then you're in trouble. High Heat, is that your primary show? Uh, it was my primary show for the last couple of years, like 2019 to 2022. This year I did more quick pitch. Um, our nightly highlight show, which was fun to do. You know, you recap the show. We have different ways of introducing the games and showing the highlights and things like that. But, you know, here at the winter meetings, back with Russo and doing High Heat, which yeah. is a lot of fun. He he always has hot takes. He was all over it today with, you know, why did the Giants even get involved with Aaron Judge? They should have known not to dip their toe in the water if the Yankees were going to match. Now their fan base is going to be disappointed of whoever they get next. So, 
you know, he is fired up. He always has hot takes. I'll always get a text at eight o'clock in the morning from him about like what we would talk about on the show or some random thing. Like last night, he texted me about this Hornus Wagner interview when he was 59 years old. So, uh, <laughs> so he's, he's That's my guy. Yeah, the mad dog. He, he's a character, he's, yeah. but he's, he's great to deal with it. You know, for someone who grew up in New York and, you know, I listened to him as a kid, like yeah. growing up and listening to him now working with him. It's, it's pretty neat. Like when we, we, you know, when we had him on and, and I've just been fortunate to have him on my shows over the years. And I wanted to truly express to the audience, like he's now a radio hall of famer, right? That's not, this is not sports radio. Right. This is, you know, radio is a medium that has carried this country through world wars, right. depression, through right. so many things right. in a way that you know, radio is a big deal in our country. And when you take the greatest news entertainers who've ever been on radio, mm -hmm. you know, think about what radio was when there was no television. Right. I mean, right. think how big that was. Right. That's how you listen to the president of the United States. and mm -hmm. You got your news. And to think that he's now with the greats of the greats yeah. is a big deal. Oh, it's a huge deal. And. Like you said, you know, we all talk about Vince Scully and Red Barber and those guys. Yeah, we remember them from the TV games they did, but they got their start on radio. And, you know, Russo, he got in with Susan Wallman. Those two are the two people I listened to in the radio when I was a kid. You know, when you're driving home, Susan Wallman was on WFAN in New York, usually overnights or fill-ins on weekends and did Yankee games, obviously. And Russo would be mid-afternoon with Mike and the Mad Dog. And, you know, that is important. People still care about the radio. Like, what, we, what we're doing now is still – everything spins off of radio. Television is a spin off of radio. Podcast is a spin off of radio. Everything spins off of radio. Radio is still a medium that even though people feel like, oh, it's maybe dying. No, it isn't. When you get in your car, what do you listen to? radio or a podcast and they're all um parts of each other and so him being in a national radio hall of fame is outstanding so now where do you guys pivot because the big news you, you'll mm -hmm. hammer that there's no yeah. question you should but now we're still here mm -hmm. and now all this money that was out there mm -hmm. well it didn't go to judge right it's got to go somewhere it's now. Go somewhere. So I mean, now that the Padres have been all in on Turner and they've been all in on Judge mm -hmm. and the Giants all in on Judge, so and there's other teams. Mm -hmm. Where wh where are you guys talking right now? Where the money is going to uh, go? Rodon is the next one that is probably the next domino to fall, and the shortstops also. Um, Rodon, we talked about a lot, especially that's where the place the Giants can pivot because he wants six or seven years. And the Giants are always kind of built on pitching. Yeah, they would like a big bat because people remember Barry Bonds and Will Clark and stuff like that. But when they won their three championships in five years, it was starting pitching. So I think that's the next place where we're kind of all focusing on and talking about at our network. And then also the shortstops, Correa, Bogarts. Now we're hearing from John Heyman and Pete Abraham that they're close in negotiation, the Red Sox and Bogarts. So now we feel like the shortstop domino is the next one to fall, whether it's Bogarts or Correa or uh, Swanson, where do they go? And now with Contreras signing with the Cardinals, we don't think Swanson was a thought to be a fit with St. Louis. Now we don't know where he's going to fit. So it almost, it almost feels like that those three shortstops could end up being back on their teams. Bogart could be back on the Red Sox. I could see Correa being back on the Twins. I could see Swanson ending up back on the Braves. Yeah, I remember Kobe Bryant will never play for the Lakers again. Right. Aaron Judge will not be with yeah. the Yankees. Yeah. Xander Bogart doesn't even want to talk to the Red right. Sox anymore. Right. All right. Here yeah. we go. Here yeah. we go. It's it's always, I think, the place you know more. And it's always, you know it's a family type of thing. So Bogarts and judge. Yeah. They're probably frustrations were how negotiation went because they're like, Hey, we know each other for years. Why don't we just pony up and settle in? So there may have been hard feelings, but now after those hard feelings settle and you become adults and you realize where your off season is, they both knew that Bogarts feels like he's probably better as a Red Sox and judge feels like he's better as a Yankee. I don't think Bogarts would want to adjust anywhere else. Maybe Philadelphia if Turner didn't go there. I thought Bogarts was going to go, but Bogarts probably sees all the other alternatives and like, no, Boston's pretty good. I know the park. I know the division. I know the franchise. If they give me what I want, I'll stay there. So I think that's that's probably the next dominoes to fall. Well, thank you. Everything you do for our show. It really means a lot. We want to bring you on. Cody, say thank you. Thank you, Moses. Nice to finally meet yeah, you, too. Nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you. No, it, it's great. I'm always glad to help and, you know, getting a chance to 
watch online and things like that. It's it's great. I'm glad to help out. I'm well, glad to be here. Yeah, it's great to finally meet you. And uh, hopefully we get to do this every year at the winter yes, meetings. So and we don't get interrupted again. I mean, it's so yeah. hard to believe we haven't been here since 2019. But right. during the season, yeah. we got to have you on the show. Uh, but guarantee it. Because now, you know, the Mets and A's, they, they'll play each other every year. So when the, when the Mets and A's face each other, I'll, I'll be on. And and you just think of the A's influence on your Mets. Mm-hmm. Sandy's still there. Sandy, yeah. You had, you had Seabass, mm-hmm. Canna, yeah. Marte. Marte, yeah. You've been taking our players yeah. now, too. <laughs> Was the Yankees, now it's you yeah, guys. Yeah, now it's us. <laughs> Follow the money, as they say. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk soon. Happy okay. holidays. Absolutely. Take we care. got more coming up next right here on A's Cast Live. The Coliseum has gone by many names, but none better than The Last Dive Bar. Hi, everyone. Ken Korak here, and my friends at Last Dive Bar are helping us celebrate our longtime home. Last Dive Bar has the most unique merchandise for all Oakland baseball fans. T-shirts, sweatshirts, the Ray Fossey line, and my personal favorite, the lights have taken full effect. Visit their website at lastdivebar.com or follow them on social media at Last Dive Bar. All proceeds are invested back into the A's Community Fund and their affiliated charities. Go to lastdivebar.com. That's Last Dive Bar. The Oakland Athletics begin spring training on February 25th. Now's the time to make plans to catch us in Mesa, Arizona, and enjoy the sunshine of your family and friends. Buy your tickets early for the best seats at the lowest prices as your green and gold take on the Giants, Dodgers, Padres, Angels, and more at Ojo Cam Stadium. And Tony, it's a deep drive to right in the corner. Gritchick going back. He'll turn and watch it fly. Get your tickets at athletics.com slash spring. That's athletics.com slash spring. This is Chris Townsend for the Chicken Pie Shop of Walnut Creek. Great news. Our indoor dining is back along with our beautiful patio dining. Come taste our world-famous chicken pie that has been served in Southern California for 83 years. The Chicken Pie Shop of Walnut Creek has one of the most dynamic menus plus a full bar. Pot pies, gourmet burgers, sandwiches, salads, flatbreads, and more. Don't forget, we still do takeout and delivery. For all the information, go to chickenpieshopwc.com. That's chickenpieshopwc.com. Senior writer for MLB Pipeline, Jim Callis, stopped by A's Cast Live and discussed the prospects he likes in the A's farm system. I like Ken Waldachuk. I think he's a little unheralded. I think Tyler saw like Shea Langoliers got there this year. I really like Shea Langoliers. I think having Shea Langoliers makes it easier to let Tyler Soderstrom do what he does best, which is hit. And it's always tough when you have a really offensive minded catcher like Tyler was, where if you catch him, it detracts from his hitting because of the time you have to devote to catching and then the physical toll. So I think they're going to get more out of Tyler Soderstrom's bat. To listen to the full interview and much more, go to athletics.com slash A's cast. A's cast live continues from the town. Here's Chris Townsend. Cody, we've talked about what was the most fascinating interview that we had at the 2019 winter meetings. Very easily it was when we talked to Kem Golden, who is the founder of Because Baseball and Baseball in Egypt, which was interesting. We found out we found out from Bobby Evans. So we had so we had to find out more about it and Kem's back now again. I mean, Egypt, do you think pyramids? I mean, you think you you, you I mean you you go to Egypt for certain the Nile, you don't think baseball, but quickly Get us some updates on, on what's been happening here in San Diego. So the Mets now have Jose Quintana, two-year deal for $26 million, so the average is $13 million a year. And apparently there's rumors that the uh, Red Sox and negotiations between the Red Sox and Bogarts are heating up. But I thought – he, I, he, yeah. I was told – You've never played for the Red Sox again. My source, the lobby said he was going, Kobe Bryant, I'm never going to play for the Lakers again. Uh, if anything else comes on, that's but that's all we've seen. Yeah, one red one Red Sox person said when asked whether the Red Sox would sign Bogarts, they answer without hesitation, yes. By the way, the the Yankee people over the Yes Network yesterday, you could see panic. You could see just panic in their faces. Now they're all told you so. Who's leaving New York? Were the Yankees? They got a, they got their swagger back today. There's no question because we saw yesterday they were like. 
I, he, he can't be going to San Francisco. Can you, ma- can you imagine if the New York Yankees lost Aaron Judge to the Padres? How crazy that would be? That would be insane. So give us an update. Baseball, Egypt, still rocking. Still rocking. And um, really grateful, first, let me say, for you guys having having me on. It's it's always a pleasure to speak with you um, and and to, to provide good news from Egypt. Um, I just actually flew into Cairo, from Cairo to San Diego on Monday night, it seems like, a week ago now. That's um, got to be like 20 hours or something like that? It was a 26-hour door-to-door. Uh, it was wow. not direct, and it's a 10-hour time difference. And so I, let's, let's suffice it to say I'm feeling it right now. Yeah, yeah no doubt. Because uh, like the first day you're on adrenaline, the next couple days it's like it hits you. And in the, in the, the, the worst thing about this, that type of travel is once your body finally adjusts, you got to go back. Well, thankfully, I've got a few uh, months before I'll head back over there. So that gives me a little bit of time to to acclimate before you're right, before the, the journey begins again. So I know there obviously COVID changed things for everybody. Yeah. How did you guys go through it? And where are we now? Because I know Giancarlo Stanton's been over. Yeah. You've had some big names over there. Where are we now with the project? Yeah. So, you know, when we talked back in 2019, we were really on a really positive trajectory. We had been starting to work in schools, orphanages, had this weekly um, league that's the first MLB youth affiliate and RBI affiliate in the region. Um, now, COVID, you know, threw a wrench into all those plans. You know, we had big expansion plans for 2020. Um, but what we had to do during that time frame is, like anyone, um, I think it's pivot, figure out ways to um, creatively meet that moment. And so we developed a series of videos, actually, um, that were made to teach kids A, first how to make some equipment at home in Egypt, and then some rudimentary drills so they could practice at home with their friends and family during this time where um, we were not able to provide in-person programming. And interestingly, the, the, the gentleman that did those videos for us uh, and has become a friend of the program is a guy named Josh Nashed from up in y'all's direction. He's a coach at St. Mary's College, right. uh, and he's one quarter Egyptian. His grandfather is from Egypt, so he made these videos. We put them into Arabic, and it's, to my knowledge, the first uh, instructional videos designed specifically for the Arab market. So it was a big hit. We reached about 800,000 people using uh, that video. So, you know, even when we couldn't be over there, eh, we were, we were excited. So even when we couldn't be over there, we were still teaching the game uh, to children in that region. Uh, So, yeah, so we came out of COVID ready to restart. um, And in last spring, we put on MLB's first uh, play ball international event in Egypt. And so that was really a great way to kick things back off in person in Cairo. Um, And we had a, a really a great cast of individuals that came over there. Bobby Evans, um, former GM of the Giants, who I know is a friend of, of the program. Yeah, He was over there. Um, Josh Noshed, who I just m- mentioned, got to go back, explore his heritage and coach kids in person after they got to know him over that social media virtual uh, platform. Uh, and then uh, Corey Guerin, uh, former big leaguer, was the first retired big leaguer to come over, 10-year veteran, uh, played for a number of teams, uh, and including, I believe, the A's at one point. Played for the Giants, yeah. And the Giants, yeah. So he many, many teams over the course of that that career. So that's what got us going again. And then uh, fast forward to the fall, um, we were back in schools, orphanages, um, and reached about 2,500 kids this fall alone. And uh, Asher Wojciechowski, another retired player, came over with his wife for the entire season as a volunteer coach. Um, and while over there, um, word on the street was, John Carlos Stanton was traveling through Egypt. <laughs> a simple call, a couple pictures sent, and boom, he came and, and coached with us for an it's afternoon. It's a big deal. It was exciting. He's a big guy. It's a big deal. Well, I'll tell you, Asher's not small either, but but those two guys standing together really, uh, I think, both intimidated and inspired the Egyptian kids. So where is Major League Baseball with you saying, yeah, let, let, let's invest in this? Yeah. So MLB has been very, very excited about what we're doing, obviously. I mean, it's at one level, it's a new market. At another level, it's new talent. But I think mostly it's about, it's an amazing story, right? I mean, we are sharing a game that we love um, with our friends overseas. And I, and I think that that has always been the vision. And really, I think as I, I shared with you last time, what my where my heart is in this is bringing baseball to kids from all parts of society, right? And so the emphasis is not just the elite kids, but having kids 
who are rich, poor, middle class, even orphans coming together. We also have special needs kids we reach. It's really about sharing this beautiful game that brings people together here in the United States and worldwide with Egypt, with the Middle East writ large, and bringing people together then. So MLB, to answer your question, is very excited about what we're doing. Um, again, as I mentioned earlier, they, they were they named us their first MLB youth affiliate in the region. Um, we have an R, it's the RBI League program over there. Um, and they provided equipment uh, to us, which and we're outfitting each of our school partners. So far, we've outfit fitted, I believe, seven schools. Well, by the end of this year, we'll have between 10 and 12 schools fully outfitted, trained their PE teachers so that they can replicate and teach their kids there as well. So the idea is sustainable growth of the game. And the idea is to build capacity in, in a place like Egypt, which prior to our arrival in 2017, the only pockets of baseball you could find being played there were among American expats. I think about talent. They have athletic talent. Now, obviously, that translates into soccer. Yeah. Um, do they play cricket? They don't. And, and that was a surprise to me, right? Having the British history that's there, I expected there to be uh, some sort of a history of, of cricket. But what you'll find in Egypt, and, and this is pretty indicative of the Middle East writ large, is that it's football, i.e. soccer, or bust. Yeah. If you have money, you may play at a club. And if you play at a club, you have access to any sports you want. Um, but if you don't have money, it means you're playing football and that's it. And so yeah, yeah. certain golf courses are pretty big there, but yeah, you got to have money. I mean, you got to have come from wealth. Right. So, and, and that to me is baseball has always represented a great equalizer here in the United States, right? I mean, there was stickball played in the streets of New York. And sure. that's part of what inspired me is if we, if baseball can be a sport like that here, why can't it be everywhere? And so it, it's been fun because what that means is most kids who've only been exposed to soccer, which is foot eye coordination, get to learn something new. And a lot of them are very good, especially we've seen the girls have a ton of innate talent. There's uh, John Carla posted a great video of him working with the kids. And one of the girls, I mean, is just whipping it back at him with great form and great speed. I mean, it, she's got a gun, you know, and it's fun to see that. And, and, and not every kid is going to have that level of, of aptitude, but we see everywhere kids are sponges. They pick things up so yeah. quickly and they have an eagerness and desire to learn. And, you know, some, somebody may, wa may be watching this and they may say, all right, guys, you're talking about kids playing in Egypt, right? And you're talking about <laughs> the Middle East, you're talking about Africa and everything. I just want to remind everybody what hockey was before Wayne Gretzky was traded from Edmonton to L.A. There was no hockey really in Southern California. There was no hockey on the West Coast. And there might have been some minor league stuff and there was some non-professional stuff. There was there, there was. Hockey was now well. Gretzky goes to L.A., which then leads to the San Jose Sharks, the Phoenix, the Phoenix Coyotes, the Dallas Stars. It led to to to, to hockey in warm weather places, and now we see kids on the West Coast actually getting drafted by teams in the NHL now. Hmm. So there's got to be a start, and there's got to be a change, and then if you stick with it over time, you will see fruits from that. And we've seen it with hockey. That's why it doesn't shock me that we could see it with baseball in the Middle East where these kids, we know they're great athletes. They just need to be exposed to the game. And if you do it long enough, you could have some international signings. I, I think you've said it so well. I think the key to anything is you, you keep showing up. You know, and I think one thing that our friends in, in the region have said is, you know, they've had other foreigners come through and say they're going to do something, right? But we come by back season after season um, and we work with them season after season and it, we're committed to our friends over there. We're committed to these young Egyptian kids. And I think having having consistency and integrity and saying what you're going to do and then doing what you said you're going to do is key. And to your point, that repetition, that continuous commitment is going to breed great results over time. And it already is. But it, yeah, the sky's the limit to your point in terms of talent, exposure and numbers. When do you think... And this is tough. And obviously COVID set you back a little bit because Bobby Evans said, I think we'll start seeing fruits over here in the United States before you know it. When do you think we can actually see some kids who may come over, may play in college, may get a shot in the minor leagues? How far away do you think we are? Well, I'm an eternal optimist, but I think as a, the realist side of me says, you know, I think 10 years and is the absolute sort of longest term. And I think 15 years till we got someone in, in, in the majors, 
maybe 20 years till an all-star, maybe 25, 30. Then we're, we're talking about even, even higher, higher sort of, uh, performance, uh, athletes. But, you know, I do think the sky's the limit. And to your point about numbers as well earlier, there are about, there are 109 million people in Egypt. 25% of those are over 25, meaning you've got about 82 million kids under 25. That's a huge talent pool. That's just waiting to discover baseball. And every sport, it doesn't matter what sport, everywhere you look, everybody wants to be global, Yeah, right? They want the market. Hockey wants to be global. I mean, it's tough for the NFL to be global because not everybody, I mean, it's just that they've tried NFL Europe. They've tried certain things. It's tough to get people into, I mean, it's a violent game where people get hurt. Yeah. But when you look at golf, you look at tennis, you look at baseball, we look at basketball. We want this. We want all of our sports to be global and they're more global than ever before. Yeah, it's true. And, and, and for those of listeners who want to sort of follow our global journey in Egypt, I'd, you know, what I would recommend and what I would share is, is some of our social media uh, spots. It's at because baseball on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook, and you can join the global journey and there'll be opportunities, and we're, we're, we're inviting our friends over here who play baseball who want a coach to join the global journey to come over the Atlantic to coach some baseball like Corey, like Asher, like John Carlo did. I mean, it's the sky's the limit, like I said, in the experience of the pyramids, the experience of the Nile, as you brought up, those iconic pieces that have defined a civilization for millennia mixed in with the beautiful sport of baseball. I mean, how much fun is that and, and what, what kind of amazing story is that to be a part of? So we invite all these listeners who are, who are excited about this to join in this uh, journey. Great stuff. I, I expect a progress report next year at the winter meetings. It's going to be fun, and I, I, I can't predict how much progress is going to be, but all I can say is it's going to be phenomenal. I love it. All right, that's going to do it for our first session here at the winter meetings. We're going to have Bob Melvin coming by in a little bit. We're going to tape. So we're going to take a little lunch break. We'll be back at 2 o'clock, 2 to 4, wrapping up the winter meetings here in San Diego. But we have a lot of signings. Millions upon millions upon millions of dollars have been spent. The Yankee machine's been fired up again. They got their swagger. By the way, I just saw a bunch of Giants backpacks leaving for the airport. Uh, that, was, that was Giants PR. Yeah, they're not... Um, Things have changed since yesterday afternoon. Giants were riding high. Not so much anymore. And that pains us. That really does. Pains us. Hurts here. the soul, huh? Yeah, really. It just it just hurts. But a lot to talk about. We'll get everything updated. We're coming back at 2 o'clock. Oakland Athletic Spring Training is right around the corner. And you can be part of the excitement. Get your tickets now and plan ahead for a fun-filled